This is the end. Beautiful friend. This is the end. My only friend. The end. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Kayfabe Today podcast, the show that will stay on the air even if I'm the only one who listens. I am your host, Eric, and that was supposed to trigger you. So if you're upset, it worked. Congratulations, you fell for it. I am here again this week with Mr. Reliable, the man whose channel has so much content, just thinking about it makes me sleepy. Travis from the Hibiki TMD YouTube channel. Travis, my good friend, my, my partner in the ring, part of the Can-Am Delights. How you doing? Thank you, man, for having me back. Man, Mr. Reliable, I kind of like that gimmick. It's way better than Mr. Irrelevant. The well, I figured, I figured since, your, since your brother Mike gave me the Canadian Miracle as a nickname, I figured <laughs> I'd return the favor and offer you a nickname of, myself, uh, of your own. I'm, I'm picturing, picturing a glorious studded robe for myself with Mr. Reliable on the back like Mr. <laughs> Wonderful Paul. Like, a, like a, Rick, a Ric Flair type robe, like all bedazzled yes. and... I, I can exactly. see. You'd rock the shit out of it. Let's be honest. Thank you, man. And yeah, thank you again for having me back. My pleasure as always, man. Let the fine people of this podcast know what you do and where they can find you online. We'll get that out of the way right at the beginning. Yeah, well, you can follow me on Twitter, as always, at the Hibiki TMD. If you're into gaming, check out the Reset Button podcast. Got a little bit for everybody. Gaming and wrestling is pretty much the theme of the channel. At Hibiki TMD, TMD on YouTube, excuse me. Just hit that subscribe, like, comment. No matter if it's good or bad, but yeah, Slam Pigs podcast, well, a wrestling show with my co-host Michael doing a uh, sideshow, Slam Pigs Cruise Control or 205 Live Show, and Slam Pigs Union Smack, which was supposed to be our UK weekly show, but that's never going to fucking happen, apparently, so it's turning like our retro review show, so there you go. It's what we do. There you go. So go. be sure to check them out. Hit that subscribe button. It's a great channel. Tons of content. Only subscribe to Travis. Thanks. You don't need anybody else. <laughs> All right, so let's get it right out of the way. The big news this week, the news that has the internet going absolutely crazy yet again, is that Talking Smack is canceled. Oh, no. A talk show is over on a wrestling station. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, okay, look. The only thing I think that was a dick move is that Renee Young uh, and Daniel Bryan, you know, the hosts of the show, found out the same they found way out on Twitter. Travis yep. and I did. They found out on Twitter that's a huge dick move. WWE should contact their talent before letting, or, you know, e even if there's an idea that they're going to cancel the show, maybe give them a heads up instead of, you know, logging onto Twitter and getting a tweet from someone and being like, oh, cool, I lost my job. I thought that was yeah. the fucking, that was the biggest dick move. As far as the show being canceled, look, um, they canceled it because of a, a low viewership. I mean, if if you wanted it to stay on, you should have encouraged more people to watch it. Uh, did it have awesome moments? Yes. Did I watch it every week? No. I mean, first of all, I'm not going to sit through 205 Live to get to Talking Smack. That's probably what hurt it. And I think that's where the source yeah. of a lot of the outrage is. Um, I do believe that they should have they should put 205 Live before SmackDown, and then they could have had Talking Smack right after. But that wasn't the case. Uh, nobody watched it, and if nobody watches the show, they're not going to keep it on. That's just that's business. It's a business decision. It, the WWE isn't here to make decisions to pander to everyone online. I mean, even though it seems like that's what they do more so than ever, um, but that's not what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to do look at the business, look at the numbers, and numbers don't lie. I'm sorry, numbers don't lie. And to the people out there going, ah, but why didn't they just cancel 205 Live instead? There's a big difference. There's a huge fucking difference between canceling a talk show and wiping out an entire division. There is a huge difference there. I don't because know, at the end of the day, yeah, Renee Young and Dan Ryan still have something else to fucking do. They didn't lose the their, exactly. They didn't lose their jobs. Yeah. Oh, and, and I'm sorry. Like this kind of bothered me. Renee Young's thing about oh, I guess I'll just go back to welcoming people at this time. It's like, bitch, shut the fuck up. You work for the WWE. What are you complaining about? Like, you get a lot of yeah. money to talk to big sweaty dudes. Do you know how many people would love to do that for significantly less money than I'm sure? I mean, I'm sure she's not making, you know, top dollar, but she's got to be making a pretty good living. And I'll do it for a fucking pack of smokes and a coupon at Red Lobster. <laughs> there you go. I don't care. Or we could be like Izzy's parents and just do it for merch and TV time. You know? Yeah. Oh, man. Alexa merch. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I could, I, man, I could not have said it better. I could not have said it better. And you know what? Like I, I told you off air, I like talking smack. Every time I caught it, and like you, I didn't catch it every week. But I liked what it was. It was a organic way of getting guys over. Let them be themselves a little bit more. We loaded 15, 20 minute little showcase. You know, it was on demand. It wasn't it wasn't setting the world on fire, but a lot of people did praise it. We all know that, you know, the Mrs. Promo on Talking Smack, I think last year that we all gloated about that was really good. That was the that best may thing. be I was gonna say that may be the best thing ever on that show. Yeah, um, by far. Some that, of, and that, you know, for what it's worth, a lot of good John Cena promos have been on Talking Smack. That's true. But it's it, you're right. You're completely right. And the whole the whole placement of all this stuff on Tuesday, the way the two of five live is presented right after a dead crowd, it's all asinine and head scratching. It's like, what the fuck is going on? It's obvious road dogs pulling the strings, blazing a joint or something. Cause man, it doesn't make sense. No, like my God talking smack. Okay. You want your pre-show that's 15 minutes on demand. You're putting it an hour after the show. Why not just throw it in there real quick? You know, yeah. like give the it's on demand. Two or five live could have started at eleven thirty or eleven twenty or ten or whatever it was. You know what I mean? And two or five live for one should have not even been on Tuesday. Third on Thursday. Why not? Give something to compete with impact or whatever, you know, and then that would make impact try a little bit harder. And then competition makes wrestling better than it. Yeah. But not to go off topic, you're completely right. It was shitty the way they found out. That's the only thing that really soured me on this more than anything. Um it, it reminds me when John Laurinaitis like let the Rock's contract expire and didn't even tell him stuff like that. Remember, like way back in the day. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Like, Renee Young, shut your mouth. You're still employed. Be thankful. There's a bunch of girls training in NXT to do your job. So I would always be looking over my shoulder because any any guy in wrestling, any man, woman, anybody, it's it's always case that you're somebody one second, the next second you can't be. And that's just, that's the nature of the beast. And she needs to be a little more careful what she says, especially being employed by that company. And I mean, I understand her disappointment and her frustration. I, I'm not like saying that like she's completely unjustified for saying that, but you got to keep things yeah. into in perspective. You know, you got to keep professionalism. Exactly. And you have to realize how fucking lucky you actually are. And yeah, it sucks that your little talk show got taken away and that your first show on the network got taken away. But maybe that's not a problem with the WWE. Maybe at the end of the day, Renee Young has to look in the mirror and has to accept the fact that maybe just people just don't want to watch her as much as she thinks they do. That's Here's the thing. Like, Here's the thing, Eric. Like, I, you would agree that Talking Smack is just this like this it makes it like a when a dvd gets a re-release it's like a 1.5 it's, it's to enhance what you just saw on smackdown yeah. that week yeah, right? it, exactly. it's, it's an organic way to get these guys over why not just take that 15 minute show and put it on the actual fucking show instead of filler and bullshit and just transition that on there instead i think that's what they're doing and i get it and i don't want i don't i think people are like going to think we're coming off like we didn't like this show like i you liked it i'm sure i liked it and it sucks that it goes away but if it's going to make the actual show better where things actually need fixed we're all for it is what we're saying way yeah. more than just i just extra, think there's more I, I just think yeah i just think there's bigger like you mentioned earlier i just think there's way bigger problems within that company than talking smack and that yes, if sir. if taking uh if taking talking smack off the air leads to talent being more of themselves on the actual show like you mentioned then i'm all for it and it's not like your precious talk shows are going away either they're still going to happen after pay-per-views we have about 75 of them every fucking year so you'll get 75 episodes of talking smack after every pay-per-view so like instead of having it every week you'll get it every two weeks is it right. really that is it really like some people online are fucking losing their minds and that's why it led me to put out a tweet like if you're this upset about a talk show being removed from a wrestling channel go outside find another hobby do something else besides wrestling because your life is way too focused on a you know predetermined sport sorry yep and i love wrestling more than anybody knows like i love wrestling since I've, it's the one thing in my life that I've been consistently doing the entire time. So it's not because I don't love wrestling. I just think a lot of people get way too invested, way too focused on the like, small shit. That the, if they canceled SmackDown, I'd be up in arms. I'd be freaking out. What, why would you remove this? Blah, blah, blah. It's a talk show. Okay? Yeah. If, this, if removing this talk show lets the boys be more entertaining on the actual wrestling show, I'm all for it. You know, and all this was really because you think of any era in WWE, we never really had a show like this. All this was was their attempt to make them seem like a more relevant sport. This was presented just like an ESPN with a little scroll at the bottom of social. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everything about it, it was an attempt to be that. And I think 
we've always seen this done, like blended in with the main show. And I think it just sometimes what translates, and I'm not saying it didn't translate well, but what viewers want, it's like the, okay, this is a stretch. It's like when the brawl for all happened and the fans booed the shit out of it because the, we don't want boxing. We want wrestling. Yeah. yeah, this was a nice show, but at the end of the day, it, it's coming off like you're trying to be ESPN too much, in my opinion. Yeah, or they're trying to be the UFC or they're trying to be something that they're not. Just just be wrestling. Just and be it's, fucking like, It's worked this long. And I, mean, I think you said something just now and I, it like, like turned a light on in my head. And I think I really figured out why people are really this upset about talking smack not being online. And you mentioned that ticker at the bottom of the screen. I think the Twitter virgins of the world are just pissed because they're like, well, now I won't be able to get my tweets on TV. <laughs> That's why they're really that upset. For... Because talking smack would be on late as it is anyway. And by that time, 11 p.m., I'm, I'm an old man at this stage of the game, and I'm pretty tired. So I zone out during talking smack. Some you ever actually just keep reading these scrolls? They just seem like it's like Alexa automatically just like someone said voice to fucking text, and they just sent out. Like, they don't make sense sometimes. A lot of them are, you know? are, are dumb, and I don't know why they're up there. And then I have but then both. I'm like, oh, they don't make sense. No, wait, they're actually people because, yeah, that's valid. Yeah. Oh, that's it comes from, you're like, type of. You're like, oh, it comes from Twitter. That, okay, now I know why it doesn't make sense. But yeah, exactly. so that's it. Talking smack is no more. You're going to see it twice a month. Get over it. That's that's, that's pretty so, much all. Oh, that... wait. So they are keeping it. They are keeping it twice a month. They're keeping it. They're they're instead of doing it after Raw and SmackDown, they're just going to do it after the pay per views now. So you'll get Talking Smack when it's a SmackDown pay per view, and you'll get Raw Talk when it's a Raw pay per view. So they're still getting your ta- your feel, precious talk show. Makes me feel more justified. So people stop bitching. It's still there. You get it's better than nothing. Well, I got nice... four episodes of Castlevania, and that was fine. Yeah. I was happy. Well, there you go. You know, like these people would fucking die in the UK where where TV shows are like two seasons and that's it. And that's probably why their TV is a lot better than American TV. Well, that really sours me so much more on Renee's tweet now that I know it's still there twice a month. Like, right? shut up, Renee. Right? Good. That's that's my whole wow. issue. It's like, okay, yeah, you're a backstage interviewer for WWE. I would give my left testicle to be the little backstage interviewer that gets his ass kicked by the wrestlers every week. I'd be great at it. I'd be great. Yeah, at I just it. assume they just pulled the plug legit. But no, yeah, did they're not still know. getting it after raw after raw pay per views and SmackDown pay per views. So they're still gonna get their chance to put their talent on the air. People are still gonna have their precious little talk. I mean, I never liked the pre and post shows in anything, not just wrestling. I'm not yeah. there to watch people talk about what we're about to see. I'm there to watch what I want to see. You know what I mean? So like when it's over, yeah. and it, the thing about talking smack is besides the Miz's promo. Okay, that's the one thing that really sticks out. Anything else? I don't really remember. It it was all very forgettable to me. You know what they used to do? And by the way, SummerSlam six hours again this year. Oh, no. Fuck. Yes. I'm sorry to be the bearer of that. Paul bearer of bad news. But (laughs) do you remember back when, like, you know, it was on Sunday Night Heat and it would be an hour before the and it would be the same crowd live before yep. the actual pay-per-view. And it, it it flowed beautifully sometimes, you know, by the end, it kind of jumped the shark to like 2003. It wasn't yeah. the same. But like when it first started, in like 98, I remember like they would transition angles from that show and make you want to buy the pay-per-view real quick. They should try to go back to that kind well, of that was the, that, that was the whole thing. The, the Sunday Night Heat was like your your free preview. It was what exactly. the pre-show is now, except it had matches, and sometimes it even had parts of storylines that led into that pay-per-view later on that night. So you're building and a nice, old. like a nice storyline, a nice continuity throughout your. We're show. old enough to remember the free-for-all on the preview channel yeah. and the little box in the right yes. corner. That's all you got. That's I, all you could dude, see. And we I still like, watched every second of it. I, I would was, even tape that on the VCR yes. sometimes. Dude, I used, okay, you want to know how big? Okay, if anybody wants to question how big of a wrestling fan I actually am, when I was a kid, we couldn't afford pay-per-view, right? But with cable boxes, you got those pay-per-view channels scrambled. And every once in a while, you would get really lucky, and everybody would yep. be like this weird bluish-purple color, but the screen would be perfectly straight. There was no lines, nothing. Do you know how many fucking wrestling pay-per-views I watched scrambled? I mean, porn came on right after, so but that's just that was my talking smack. <laughs> Laid the smack down <laughs> on myself. <laughs> talking smut. Um, but like, no, I used I, to I watch fucking. Re- same I, way I, though with the squiggly lines. Yeah. Like, do you remember the uh, the in your house where Taker came out of the ring and pulled Diesel down to hell? Yes. I watched that live with squiggly lines, and it yep. was confusing to hear them describe that because you've never seen that before, right? Yep. So as a kid, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I was so confused. But I yeah, didn't know there I was a portal that. of hell under the ring. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Talking smut. 
Talking Focus. smut. Stay tuned for my news show. Talking smut. <laughs> I guess Danny the um, so that so that's really <laughs> all I have to say about talking smack and the legion of fans who are like standing on the ledge ready to jump because it's not on TV anymore. Just calm down. You get it twice a month yeah. instead of four times. It's not the end of the world. Go watch Maury. Samoa Joe lost the one F five. There's bigger things to be upset about, guys. Yeah, Tr yeah, I, I agree. Uh, the other little bit of news, um, just because I don't really know what to believe anymore, so we won't spend too much time on it. Apparently, the Hardys bought the broken gimmick for fifteen thousand dollars from Jeff Jarrett. That's what I read online. Now, is this a thing that's actually true? I don't know. At this point, I don't really want to look too much into it because I just keep getting disappointed. Um, I really want the broken yeah. gimmick in WWE, really bad. Uh, I think it would be great for Matt. Um, but, I mean, I'm hoping that this is true, but I'm being cautiously optimistic. I'm actually proud of myself. I've maintained my hype. I've, I've for once, as a mark sometimes, I've maintained my hype, and I've, I've gotten numb to these little broken teases and promos. I'm like, eh, if it happens, it happens. Because I think a lot of it's the dirt sheets just, like, all over the place. Like, what what's going to happen? And I, you just grow numb to it sometimes. Yeah, that's true. But I really, I love the broken game. I think it's really, really funny. Uh, I do too. And when it comes, trust me, I'm going to jump up and down with joy. I'm just like, now with the teases, I'm like, eh. It's because I don't want the, the the Hardys to go the same way the Dudleys went. Where the Dudleys were really hot for, from that nostalgia rush right at the beginning. And then they just kind of died off to being nothing. Is nobody talking enough about, like, I'm very hesitant how they're going to handle the gimmick. That's the other issue. I'm like, do I want WWE to have the broken gimmick? I don't know. Hey, Let's see. I don't know. I I know. I uh, that's a completely, completely justified uh, reaction. I don't but know. That's something you have to deal with with every guy that comes, and you just I guess you get used to that too, and you just accept it. And if you know, let's see what they do with it, sort of. And that's why we watch. You know. Yeah. They exactly. Got us. So we'll have to stay tuned. Hopefully, uh, the broken w uh, the broken gimmick is coming to WWE, and hopefully they let Matt do most of what he wants to do. Because if that is true, real quick, what a boneheaded amount of money on Jeff Jarrett's That's, part. You're like, oh, yeah. there you go, man. They're going to make that in like three fucking shots in merch. Yeah, yeah. so like easily. Week, at least. Yeah, it yeah. won't be it won't be long before they and I mean, you know, the, that WWE, they're going to have this whole thing where probably Matt turns on Jeff or whatever, and then they'll make a DVD or WWE Network special. Oh, oh, OK, we're going to move on from the, the Hardys for a second. <laughs> I just reminded myself, did you watch the Kurt Angle 24? I love your excitement. Um, my network subscription oh, no. expired last week, so oh, I no. had yet to renew my my six month shot that automatically takes out of my account. Ran out finally, so no, I I cannot share the review with you. Oh, dude. Okay, well, it's so I won't I won't go into it too much, but it was I love. Like this week, I watched the Kevin Owens uh, DVD, which was awesome. Uh, did you then, pick that up, or did you just watch the preview on there? Both. No, I, I actually nice. I, I watch I watch it online, but I do. Uh, it's on its way. I've thought about grabbing that DVD. Is it worth it? Mm. Yes, it is. Uh, did you like the CM Punk, Mankind, Paul Heyman documentaries? Okay, then yeah. Then and, I would like it. Yeah, I, I, my it. favorite DVD I think they've ever done as far as those is Paul Heyman. I've watched that so many Paul times. Paul Heyman so is fucking fantastic. I really liked Mick yeah. Foley's too. I was a big fan of Mick Foley. Every, basically, anything that came after the CM. Like, I've always been a fan of WWE DVDs, like the stories about the wrestlers and stuff, but everything after the CM Punk one just feels like it's on a whole nother level. It started with the CM Punk one, and then ever since the then, box. it's so good. Yep. They're so good. And then D, fucking D. Snyder shows up on Mick Foley, and yeah, yeah you twist the sister in the house. But yeah, no, I have not. I want to see the Kurt Angle 24, really. I heard it's excellent. It's excellent. It's really, really good. Uh, they go into some. I, I mean, just Dixie want to see Carter. For him and Vince embrace. That's Dixie. the main part I want to see. Dude, Dixie Carter. Dixie Carter was yep, on the everybody network. Everybody is up in arms. I saw that this week. Dixie Carter is now on the network officially. Because uh, uh, last week's guest, Kenton, told me a couple days before, he was like, yo, apparently Dixie Carter is going to be on the WWE network. And I, I was like, you're trolling me. No, you're trolling me. It's a joke. And he's like, no, no, I'm serious. And then fast forward a couple days later, I'm sitting on my couch and I'm like, well, fuck me in the ass with a rusty spoon. 
Dixie yep. Carter is on the as, network. As soon as that happened, the fantasy book and marks out there were just in, in, in my head. It immediately went to when Eric Bischoff debuted on Raw in the Hug with Vince. This oh, whole yeah. text thing with Kurt Angle. What if it was to bring Dixie in the whole time? How much heat would that get her as a heel to come? Because people hate her. But then I'm, at the end of the day, I'm thinking of that angle. I'm like, wait, that would intend, uh, you know, that would have her on my television. And no. I don't want that at the end of the day. I love Dixie. So, <laughs> Dixie's my sweet Southern belle. <laughs> I like to stare at her. I just don't want her to talk or move or do anything. Just stand there. She's a pretty lady. That's hey, y'all. She just... Hey, y'all. Welcome to God. Impact, y'all. I'm going to save a drug addict. AJ Styles. Wait, how, was, how was Dixie's little uh, part on that? Um... It was fine. I mean, like, you know, she just spoke about how about like how dedicated Kurt was and, you know, talked about his demons and that she was proud of him for coming. It was incredibly fitting because I know they have a pretty or from what I've read, I shouldn't say I know because I don't know these people. Uh, but from what I've read, they have a really close relationship. So I think right. if you're going to do a retrospective of his life for the past couple of years and like his redemption and his way back to WWE, you have to include Dixie Carter. She was a big was part of his life for a long time. So, oh yeah, was it awkward to watch her on the network? No, <laughs> not at all. Actually, it was just because it was a little awkward for me to watch Cornette for a little. Then I got used to it, but at first, I was like, "This is weird." Because like I don't know. Oh no, I love oh, 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 on, well, when Cornette was on table for three. It, they, God, it needed so much more time. They cut so much out. Apparently, I mean, hour it was good for what it was. They sat down for like an yeah. hour and a half, two hours, and I was like, "Oh, I want those." Someday, if, like I don't know if like they're ever going to release those on like a compilation DVD, but like I would love to see like a full version of that on a release, like a Blu-ray or something. Oh, it would be yeah. amazing. Hell yeah, dude! Cornette, man, take my money. Cornette and Bischoff yep. make up. That was a that was a beautiful moment. That was a beautiful moment. I love I love those guys. That was a put really a booger good... on his Corvette and all the good <laughs> good feel good stories. <laughs> Well, that's why oh I listen God. to Cornette's podcast because he's got so many crazy stories, you know. Mm -hmm. So and it's really, really good. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much. Uh, is there any any other big news this week that I'm missing out on? I don't think so. It was mostly talking smack. To um, I don't know how much you want to talk about Del Rio getting suspended. Oh yes, thank you. That was the other thing. I can't believe I forgot that before the talking smack news hit. This was the biggest news of the store. Uh, biggest news of the week. Uh, Del Rio. And Paige are back in the news, and it's not flattering, especially not for Del Rio. Um, Has it ever been flattering? When yeah, <laughs> that's a good. That's an excellent point. Uh, basically, long story short, there seems to have been an argument at an airport in a restaurant. Uh, from what I've read, Paige threw a glass of water in Del Rio's face, and then a fan approached to see why Paige was crying, and she started recording. And you can clearly hear Paige tell Del Rio to fuck off, get the fuck away from me, you ruined my fucking life, you ruined my career. And Del Rio is talking about pressing charges, and she assaulted him, and just all kinds of garbage. And I'll tell you this, okay? From experience, if the police have to intervene in your relationship, get out. Get out of that relationship. Because nothing good is going to come of it. Once you reach a point where your fights are so bad that you guys can't resolve it on your own and you have to resort to law enforcement getting involved to kind of settle your problems for you, that is what is known as a toxic relationship and you should not be in it. Get out. There's no good end game for you. And again, I say this speaking from experience. <laughs> totally agree. It's and crazy. like I don't want to, and neither one of us want to come off like domestic abuse is not funny. If you are in a abusive relationship, get help immediately oh, yeah, or definitely. just get out of it. Yeah, yeah, this is one time where I'm not being like you know looking There's to totally help out there. I'm not trying um, to upset people here. Like for once, I'm not trying to trigger you guys. If <laughs> if if you're like that, I'm a, I'm being 100 percent serious. If you're in a relationship like this, even if it's not to the extent where like oh you're ruining my life, but you, you need the police to settle your differences, get the fuck out. Get out. And if you're listening to a podcast where the guys are like, if you're in a domestic relationship, just sit there and take it. You should probably seek help, too. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, get help, guys. But, uh, yeah, I did you listen to the audio on I TMZ? Did. They put, I did. Okay. So did you get a, a gleaming gut belly laugh when you heard the woman approach? And, like, she was like, she was like, seemed concerned. She's like, by the way, I'm a big yes. fan of yours. Like, like, out of nowhere. Shut the fuck up. That was so fucking un... God, don't do that, people. Put yourself in Paige's position, right? Like, let's say I'm, I'm at the airport with my girlfriend. She's freaking out. I'm freaking out. And then this woman comes up. And she's like, oh, are you okay? By the way, I'm a big fan. I'll be like, by the way, go fuck yourself. Get out of here. Like, I don't care if you're a fan. There's sometimes... Like, and this is what... 
And this is why I hate when fans are all like, oh, this, this wrestler was a dick to me at an airport. F- fuck off. Fuck off. These people that wait at airports need to go, go get a life. Meet them at the back of the arena before the show or after the show. Leave them alone. When they, like the way I see it, when a wrestler is in an airport, he's still on the clock. Right? So he's still working. He's not relaxing. They're still working. Just because they're traveling doesn't mean it's not work. Right. And if you're that kind of fan that's going to wait at the airport, you know enough of the business. You know how kayfabe works and how to present your public image. You know what's professional and not how to approach the wrestler. So don't give us your bullshit. That's why I And hate don't it. do this. Don't, especially when it's a fucking domestic yeah. case like this. Just, oh, by the way, I love your work. What the fuck? That's like me going out and getting a fight with a guy and some guy comes over to break it up and pushes me back. By the way, I love Slam Picks podcast. <laughs> so I'm in a fucking fight, asshole. Get out of the way. You know what I mean? <laughs> I can just picture you, picture you getting into a fight. This guy's kind of trying to break it up. He's like, hey, by the way, I'm a big fan. You're like, fuck off, dude. Like, get out of here. What the hell? I mean, you know, like, that's why I always got pissed off when people would shit talk CM Punk. And I love the way Punk handled it. Because if I was in his position, I would have been the same way. Don't bother me. Leave me alone. I don't care if you like Punk's, me or not. Punk's a little crabbier than most. I wouldn't be. I mean, he's just naturally crabby. That's part yeah. of the appeal to Punk. Yeah. But, I mean, if I'm, I don't know, I, w- I would have probably a limit because you would think most of these guys have worked their whole life to get this kind of, yeah. you know, th- this, let's be real. That's why you want to be a wrestler for the notoriety at the end of the day, and that's why you go to the E. But, you know, there is a fine line. And b- it, b- back to the Del Rio thing real quick. It only got messier th- from there with Paige, though. Like, she went out with these tweets, getting caught lying about the situation yeah. and taking things back. It's just like, Jesus fucking Christ, these two just need to... And then, you know, he gets, you know, obviously suspended from GFW yep. or TNA or whatever the hell it's called. And apparently not for the alleged domestic stuff. No, it was for the shoot work promos or whatever the fuck they were. Every time he get a mic in the promotion talking about WWE, they cut his mic. There's audio apparently. So that's why he's suspended. Really? And I kind of call bullshit. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't suspended over the page stuff apparently. And I kind of call bullshit on that. Yeah. But as a company, I get why they did that. Because if you had a choice what to suspend the guy for in a public image as your champion, I would go with the safer bet and just say, oh, hell yeah. Promo. So I get why they did that. Business totally. wise, it makes sense. Yeah. Because yeah, they didn't yeah. release him. He's still the champion. So, I mean, he's still their guy right now. And there's not a bigger name, even though he's not a fucking draw anywhere he's ever been besides Mexico. He's, he's the biggest name right now by far. They need him. Yeah, they do need him. And that's probably why he's still their champion, honestly. Uh, because if if he was just you know some guy on the roster, he'd be gone. Uh, and if he was in, I mean, damn, WWE dodged such a bullet with this guy. Holy shit! Like, so, I feel like it would be a lot bigger if he was in the WWE, uh, just because the WWE is a much larger company. Uh, like, if he was holding a title in WWE, I think it'd be a lot worse for him. Uh, so I guess luckily for him, he's in TNA, and nobody cares. <laughs> but I don't know. Like this whole this whole page. Del Rio relationship. Uh, at first, I was like, you know what? People are just being stupid. Just get over it. Let them be together. Because there was like right from the beginning, before anything happened, there was a lot of outrage uh, that, oh, he, you know, Paige is too young, blah, 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 all that shit. Uh, but now, yeah. you know, after it's like every week there's a new situation and none of them are good. You know, and then if you got the, the part that really concerned me is now if Paige is starting to lie for her abuser. Now you got a serious yep. problem. Now you have a There's really tons, serious problem. There's so many red flags. It's not even funny in this situation. And a lot of it always just makes me think like Del Rio allegedly has all these ties to like mob type yeah. stuff, right? Because, I mean, Paige's family, if she needs help, these aren't like these pushover motherfuckers. Her family, even her mom could probably kick a bunch of dudes ass in a bar. Like they're pretty tough, right? Yeah. So if and Paige is, you know, no cookie cutter herself. So she seems like she's coming off. We're not saying she is, but she comes off like she's afraid to leave Del Rio. Yeah, I think, you know, I've joked and said, you know, it was loan sharks that leaked the tape for Del Rio and all his connections or whatever. But it, it's worrisome. And, you know, I, I, but at the same time, Paige isn't a total victim. She totally she's an adult. Let's be real. We just we wish her the best. We if she needs help to get it immediately. Yeah, I, and I don't want to, you know, label people. But Del Rio he kind of comes off as this scary behind the scenes type cutthroat motherfucker. Like, very bad. Uh, know, very bad. About him. Very bad. Uh, um, anger issue seems like to me. Do uh, you get that feeling from him? Like he could just snap in a second. Dude, have you seen his drunken periscopes? I have. Yeah. I have. 
So yeah, I, I do feel like I've wasted three minutes of my life each time. <laughs> I have like all he does is talk shit on Triple H and on the WWE and all that shit and like you know if you that really if, see that yeah if I was like look at it, let's say I'm dating somebody who's wrestling for WWE I used to wrestle there and now I don't but she does do you really think if I love my girlfriend I'm gonna start talking shit and put her job into jeopardy like, you could say that about Punk too, but I think even Punk drew the line because his wife worked there. Yeah, least sometimes he, he there's said, so much more you know Punk wanted to say oh, yeah. when AJ Lee was still employed. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, <clears throat> Punk probably held back for his wife, um, and I think you should. I think that's the right thing to do. It's the if, right thing to do. I mean, you can even pull a Lawler straight up leave the company if they fire your wife back, yeah. like you did about Stacey yeah. Carter. Yeah. yeah, but you're not like, you know, you're not. The King way, was pretty established financially by then, though. Exactly, after, but the way yeah. that Del Rio's going about it, it's just it's not good. None of this is good. It's not a good situation for anyone involved. So, like you said, I hope Paige kind of wakes up, and you know, I think it's past the point where like you could say like, oh, I hope they get some help. I, I know I think it's it's a toxic relationship. I don't think it's working out. For, I mean, you know, I'm not an expert on relationships. That's that's Broski's love no. shack. He's not here today. Um, <laughs> but you yeah, know me instead. Yeah, you you got Eric, who's knows nothing about women. <laughs> Broski knows everything, but no, I mean, like you know, I hope Paige, you know, ends up safe because the way things are going, it keeps escalating. Everything seems to escalate. You know, first it was just arguments. Now there's some domestic violence issues. Uh, you know, we've seen this story before of two people who shouldn't be together who stay together, and it never never ends with a you know wedding and a happily ever after so you know our thoughts my last thought on it Paige is way too young and way too talented to end up in sunny territory at this stage of the game yeah. she needs to yeah yeah it's exactly it is it is and i'm not a huge pa i've never been a huge fan of pages uh, but man this is so much bigger than just wrestling you know this is somebody's life that's kind of on the line here not to be over dramatic but i mean you know more times than not these situations where there is violence and the police do intervene you know, and we don't know if they have or not, but if they haven't, shame on you, WWE. They should reach out because they love to talk about the rehab, you yeah. know, the, you know, helping guys get into that and stuff. They need to reach out to this girl. We don't, and they very may well could have. Yeah. So if we they don't have, this, good on so. you. But if you haven't, shame on you. I much. mean, I guess for for you know, just for clarity here, some of this is speculation on our part. So. Exactly. You know, we don't have all the details. We go with what we have, which is what's been released online. And if we're going by what's been released online, it's not a good situation. And somebody needs to intervene if Paige isn't willing to do it on her own. But from the looks of it, it looks like she's willing to defend Del Rio or, you know, try to lie her way out of it, which that's very to me, that's very concerning. <laughs> And seriously, like not to bring it back to wrestling off series, but it you know it is Del Rio. As far as the GFW title, you just rebranded rebranded your promotion. I think yeah. TNA's biggest problem. It's always been his biggest problem. Every time they've tried to kickstart something new, it's always been with an ex WWE guy. Just take the belt off the fucking guy. He's a liability out the ass, and put it on an EC3. You want your young talent to start up your new fucking promotion. It's that yeah, simple. I I agree. I completely agree with that. I think that would be the best. Uh best way for GFW to go uh, because Del Rio is your main guy. It's proven time, time again. He can't stay out of trouble. So, you yep. know, I think that's all we're going to, we're going to leave that there. Uh, you know, nice uh, uplifting topic of conversation there, but you know what? Don't worry. The shining wizards, they've sent me some funny ads. So we're going to boost up the mood here with a funny shining wizard ad. And we'll be right back with our raw and SmackDown nonsense. Yay. Oh yeah. And great balls of fire. Yay. Here, have fun. Listen, we'll be back. If you're not tuned in to The Shining Wizards, listen to what some of our fans have to say about the show. You guys suck. You suck, you suck, you suck. You suck, you suck, you suck. You guys suck, 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 suck. Tune in live every Tuesday night, 7 p.m. East, RantMRadio.com. It's The Shining Wizards, where it's wrestling talk and talk about wrestling. Cool. And we are back. Is everybody happy again? We got the thoughts of domestic violence out of here. We listened to the Shining Wizards ad. Everybody's in a good mood. So we're going to talk about some Great Balls of Fire. Travis, I was on your show, uh, the post show for Great Balls of Fire, and I think we were all pretty nice. surprised about how good this show actually turned out to be. Man, I came out of the show tickled pink that it was so, – I didn't think it would be that good, like wrestling-wise and pacing-wise. You know, the biggest thing everyone said, not a babyface one at all on the card. No, Oh, no, that's – well – 
Uh, that's arguable. I think that's arguable in, in the Roman Reigns Braun Strowman match. Um, but oh wait, yeah, yeah, Braun won. Braun won. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's just get into it real quick. Uh, it's kind of old now. I guess so murder trumps <laughs> murder trumps a win, though. <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, we're just going to go through this real quick because by now it's almost a week old. So uh, we had the cruiserweight championship kickoff where Neville defeated Akira Tozawa. I don't think either of us watched it because it was on the pre-show. Uh, Bray Wyatt defeated Seth Rollins. I was bored to tears during this match. I was actually pretty glad uh, that this was the first match on. Not because I don't think the guys are talented, just because I can't stand this feud. Uh, it has no interest for me whatsoever. Uh, I don't know if you're on the same page. Uh, I'm just not very... I, I really actually like the match. As a, as a match-wise, I thought it was one of Bray Wyatt's best. It was up there with like his match with Dana Bryan. Right. I like the placement because, like you said, the, the feud has sucked. And if yeah. any placement on the card, it was when the crowd was fresh and ready to watch anything. and be, So the crowd was up for it. And I thought it was good to see Bray get the win much more. Like, it didn't hurt that Rollins shocked here at all. Me. That shocked me big time. That yeah. I, I didn't think Bray but in the next win. night, we'll get to that later, though. They kept it going with that, so... Yes, which was even more shocking, but we'll get to that. <laughs> uh, big Cass beat the shit out of Enzo Amore. Uh, or Big Ass, as the... Big uh, Ass, yeah. Oh, yeah, the cameraman. That was a great shot. The entrance. Big yep. Ass. <laughs> And they, they totally didn't. changed that on Raw, by the way. So and, they didn't, and did uh, you see that uh, at one point, I think it was Sasha Banks who was blocking out most of Great Balls, and it was just written, Eat Balls? Did you see I did that? Not. No? I did not. Go back and check that out. Now. Like, she was blocking the GR, and there was just, like, the EAT, and then Balls right after it. So it was just, like, Eat Balls with Sasha and the Banks, uh, Sasha Banks in the ring looking all pissed. It was so funny. <laughs> I was hoping we got a shot of, like, Alexa on her knees and the comment. Was, never, never mind. Oh, dear. I wouldn't mind that. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I like this Enzo and Cass feud. This match went the way it was supposed to. Uh, I think it was a great idea for Cass to beat the shit out of Enzo with very little resistance. Uh, get some sympathy on Enzo. Get some heat on Big Cass. It was smart booking. Uh, we had a tag team championship 30-minute Iron Man match, which I thought was really good considering uh, Sheamus and Cesaro versus the Hardy Boys is a match we've been seeing since WrestleMania. Uh, I thought this was really good. The only thing, as usual, is in every Iron Man match, they always do where one team goes up by a fall or two, and then near the end they tie it up, and it all yeah. comes down to the uh, to the. It wire. always has to be neck and neck, and that makes it predictable each time. Like I loved at the beginning how Sheamus, or I think, no, uh, she yeah, Sheamus hit Matt Hardy with a bro kick at like eight seconds in, got that first yeah. quick pin. I thought that was cool. Then they went up two one. Then I think, uh, sorry, they went up two nothing. Uh, and then by the eleven minute mark, I thought they I went think, up three nothing at one point. Actually, was it three? I don't know, something like that. I know something. I, was I was like, man, they're running away with it. This is refreshing. But nope, you know, of course, the Hardys had to come from behind. And <laughs> yeah, they went up three one. Was the biggest lead they ever had. Then the Hardys came back with two pins. And if the Hardys had maybe two seconds more, they would have won this match, or at least tied it up again. Uh, Sheamus and Cesaro. Got a quick pin at the end with 28 seconds left. And then Jeff Hardy almost got the tying pin, but the time ran out. Your winners who retain their tag team championships, Sheamus and Cesaro. I thought this was a really that fun God, match. That goddamn timer that you love and I hate. I, I hate that <laughs> fucking timer. We, we said this on your show. I think it was a, Travis is not a fan of the timer. I, on the other hand, love to know how much more time I have to invest in a match. I wish there was a timer on every match it's like oh, okay i got 10 minutes left here that's enough time to make a sandwich i'll go do that <laughs> <laughs> but no i thought it was pretty good uh the women's championship match sasha banks defeated alexa bliss via pinfall what i don't remember what happened here do you uh, she... i thought it i thought alexa won Somehow, or it was a schmoz or something. Oh, it I was a remember. count out. It was There's so much out. wrestling on TV a week, guys. We can't remember what happened two days ago, usually. Yeah. Oh, and then Sasha Banks hit her with a pussy to the face. That was funny that WWE kept trying to sell his double knees, but it was clearly a oh, pussy yeah. to the face. I thought that was hilarious. That was funny. That, that was probably my spot of the match. Then we had the Inter Intercontinental Championship match where, thank God, The Miz defeated Dean Ambrose and uh, I just... I want Nobody this cares. to be over. The, I want this to be. No, no this the crowd didn't care. I didn't care. You didn't care. This no. feud sucks. Yeah, it's, it's dumb. It's just, you know, scraps left over from their SmackDown feud. Then the ambulance match between Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns. And I said this on your show. I'm going to say it again. I love the finish of this match because Braun didn't win. Roman beat himself. 
what happened was, and it makes so much sense because how many times are you looking at something and you're like, just move out of the way and you'll be fine. So exactly. Braun Strowman is standing in, in front of the amb ambulance, which has both doors wide open. Roman Reigns goes from like the little like fenced area where the fans sit and he, and everybody knows, okay, here comes the spear. And as soon as he was going, I was like, please just move out of the way, Strowman. And he did. And not only that, but Reigns committed. Like, props to Reigns. He committed to that spear. Because he fucking dove into that ambulance like I've never oh, yeah. seen. He should be a baseball player. If this wrestling thing doesn't work out, go be a baseball <laughs> player and steal second. Because you'll get it every time. And then, of course, everyone was up in arms of what happened after. I liked what happened, happened after because we don't see this a lot anymore. And, you know... Everyone complained, that, oh, it was hokey. And stay. well, you know, these same people don't complain when they go back and watch a best of Steve Austin. He has a Zamboni and all that right. shit. That was, it reminded me of that. And I mean, yeah, if they would have just left it, it, we never saw Braun, but they, they dolled him up enough to where it looked like he was, he sold it well when he came out of the ambulance. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I thought it was a, it wasn't great, but I was okay with it. The I thing liked that it. bothered me the most is the same people that are saying, oh, this is stupid. It's hokey. It's blah, 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 are the same people who will tell you that it, wrestling was better during the Attitude Era, which is exactly, yeah, exactly. when I saw this segment of Roman Reigns after the match puts Braun Strowman into the ambulance, drives it off to the back, and then dra backs the ambulance at full speed into a truck, right? Now, just by that description, do you think you're watching 2000s uh, WWE or 1990s WWE? Because to me, that sounds like, you know, 1999 WWE to me. So how can you complain that you want the Attitude Era back, but when WWE gives you something straight out of the Attitude Era, you're going to complain about it? This is why WWE shouldn't listen to their fans. Their fans are idiots. They don't know what they want. And this is why we can never have good fucking things in wrestling anymore exactly. because of this malcontent entitlement bullshit with fans. But not to, I digress. There is nothing more entitled on the face of the earth than a wrestling Twitter fan. Or a feminist. Oh, yeah. But let's not get started on that. <laughs> uh, I thought this was a pretty good physical match. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I thought it was one of the better matches between uh, Strowman and Reigns. Uh, but during the backstage segment, and this pissed me off, Heath Slater defeated Kurt Hawkins. Okay. Okay. It's Heath Slater and Kurt Hawkins. They're not setting the world on fire. Fine. Are I'll you give sure that. he did? Because I didn't see any of the fucking match. I'll give you that. But we got the entrances, and then they cut right back to backstage. So here's my issue. Why embarrass your boys like that? Why make them fucking look like they don't matter? Because that's basically Somebody what you're does. telling people at home. Kurt Hawkins and Heath Slater don't matter. Why would you do that to any of your talent, even if you're, you're not using them that much? I don't they, know. They've done this for ages. They've yeah. done this in Royal Rumble the, match. It rubs especially. me the wrong way every single time. I don't like it. Like, you know, in a Rumble match, so there's like, I don't know. I, why am I thinking the 93 Rumble? But it was like Giant Gonzalez came out and cleared out the ring, and they would show. There was like three guys. You never saw their entrance. They would just focus on Giant Gonzalez. They've done this right. for years. Yeah. And yeah, I totally agree. It, it does them no favors. But shout out to them for being company guys at the end of the day. Yeah, definitely. Anything. But the thing is, is like... With a rumble, okay, it's, I, I can almost give that a pass because at least there's action in the ring. This was a straight-up yeah. cut to backstage segment, you know, and it's just yeah. like, why have them come out anyway? Why have them come out? Just stay backstage. Well, like, or, I, don't, I didn't understand this. I just thought it was shit. Yeah, that None of that was needed. You could have just kept it on the announcers in shock and dismay what they just saw the exactly. whole time and then cut back. That's we're all taking, you needed we're, to do. We're, we're, we didn't expect that to happen. We're taking a couple minutes here to collect ourselves and regain. Like, you know, make something up. It's not that hard. But then again, I get it because, you know, they fly in, what, fucking 40 wrestlers for these shows and they, did, they use barely half most times. So I guess they want to get their last buck worth. Yeah, I don't I, know. I guess so, yeah. Who and knows then what they um, fucking think, man. Eh, I don't know. I just thought that was kind of shitty for the guys involved. Uh, finally, we had Brock Lesnar defeating Samoa Joe via pinfall. Awesome match. Well, okay, maybe not awesome. Great match. I liked it. I had a really fun time. Not a huge fan of Samoa Joe beating the shit out of Brock Lesnar pretty much the entire time, having the upper hand for pretty much the entire time, and being taken out by one F5. 
it was that and this picking of choosing now when finishers are dominant in a match. Yeah. Like, if anything, it's crazy to think the most protected finisher still, the meme lives on, is the brogue kick. That motherfucker is still one and done. You know what I mean? Of all the finishers. Yeah, but get... no, you can't have Dean Dean Ambrose kick out of like two FIs, but Joe with this monster push going in where he looks dominant. Just kick... Let's talk about head scratching. Yeah. I don't get how this did Joe any favors, but I don't know if he redeemed himself the next right on, on night on Raw. We'll get to that later. But man, this as as great as this match started, I was hyped. I love the attack beforehand, the song of suplex to the table. Love that. It was smart. It was heelish because it was for the bell rung, but it just the payoff was bullshit. It felt, um, you know, if I wanted to be like super Crushed. cynical. I could be like, oh, it made Joe look weak because he got the upper hand, like he got the sneak attack from behind and all this, and then he gets taken out. Blah, blah. But I don't feel like being cynical with this match. I just enjoyed it. It was two big guys beating the shit out of each other. It was physical. It was fun to watch, and it was a good main event. Was I, I think I think Joe still looks strong through the match. I don't oh, think yeah. he came out looking weak as much as it just felt like a rushed ending. Yeah. And and that begs the question, like Michael, my coach slide pick says all the time, can Brock go more than six minutes at this point? That's, Is that the underlying factor here? That's what I'm wondering because his matches aren't very long and a long match between Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar, that could be money. That could be money. I mean, we saw a little preview of it. It was pretty quick. It was like, what, under 10 minutes the match? Maybe just above? Wasn't that it went long? Like almost six fifty or something like that. Wow, that's it, Jesus. Not a lot, man. No, I mean, but it was nice. It was a nice change of pace to see Brock kind of get his ass handed to him. I mean, yes, Goldberg did it, um, but this was this just felt different because I don't think I was expecting Joe to be so dominant. Uh, it's it's always refreshing to see a younger NXT guy do it to Brock, especially how they built Brock as this monster over the years. In yeah. a way, it comes off weird at first, like Brock is this man in a land full of boys, but Joe looks like he's actually in there with a grown man for once. Like, if you put Brock in there with The Miz, I mean, come on. Yeah. You know, as, as good as The Miz is, perception's reality exactly. a lot sometimes. But Joe looks like he could legitimately hang with a Lesnar. And, you know, a lot of people disagree with that, especially, uh, like, two of my fucking co-hosts. They don't think Joe comes off presentable-wise to be taking this. And I totally disagree. I, did, I think I disagree. he does. I disagree. Just his fucking... I think he just, always has. Just his face. Just when he comes Except out. Except when he did that weird shit in TNA with his Taz as his manager, and he had face paint, and he put on, like, a dress or something weird. Oh, yeah. That was the I, other time I didn't like to. I choose to ignore that part of uh, oh. Joe's career. But, no, but WWE-wise, and especially this feud with Lesnar... Uh, it made Joe a bigger star in my eyes than he ever was. I still say if it's a multi-man match at SummerSlam, Joe's taking that title. Oh, God. I would love that. I, I don't know if I can co-sign in that. In a sneaky I, way, but I think he's going to take it. But I would definitely love yeah. that. So that was Great Balls of Fire. Very good pay-per-view with a stupid fucking name. That's, you know. I mean, if all the pay-per-views like if the pay-per-views were this dumb in, in nomenclature but gave us the entertainment that Great Balls of Fire actually gave us. That's fine. I'd be fine with that. Somebody signaled the uh, the unpopular opinion bat signal again. I came out of Great Balls of Fire actually liking how the theme of it went. Like I, every time there was a match with the graphics, they would show like little emblems on a car. I like that. Yeah, I don't know if worked. that's just me, but no, it worked. Yeah. I mean, I like I these pay per views where you have a theme and you stick the theme, like you know, Bash at the Beach. Uh, you know, all these older pay-per-views that had, like, the sets were different. You know, they were all yes, themed. Yes. And I love that stuff. I miss the Halloween Havoc graveyard yes. so fucking much. Yes. Oh, God, yeah. The Halloween Havoc graveyard. <laughs> God damn. I haven't, back. I haven't thought of that in a long time. But, yeah, you're right. And WCW, Hashtag Halloween Havoc graveyard. WCW, <laughs> for all the, all the bad things that people say, when they had these kind of, like, theme pay-per-views, they went all out and they looked cool. And, and Halloween Havoc is just one yeah. example of that. Now every stage is... I, I mean, got, it's not like they're set. Go ahead there. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, like, I like the, the, the floor and the LED floor that they have now, but every set looks the same. Back in the day, every set was different. Like, not for Raw, but for your pay-per-views. They did a little something special. Now you get Mania, maybe SummerSlam, you'll get a special set, but that's it, you know? Uh, it's I, literally like when the network launched in early 14, they just kept using the same sets after that to cut back a lot of costs because they yeah. took a hell of a cut. That's yeah. a lot of it. And I, I totally agree, though. It adds so much. It separates it. Um, 
I would have loved to see some sort of 50s theme for this. Oh, God, I can really yeah. imagine what they would have done back like in the maybe day. Put it would little... maybe look like Angel Grove or whatever in yeah. Back to the Future. Or put a little say like... Angel Grove. That's Power Rangers. That's Power Rangers, so yeah. Or, or have like a little ice cream social on the stand, on the stage, like off to the side. You know, make it really 50s. Deuce make... and Domino, come back. Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> have, have waitresses on roller skates bring the wrestlers like bottles of water and shit. Oh my god. That would be great actually. And then look you have cool. fucking Michael Cole all dolled up like Fonzie. Oh god. Do it. I mean Corey okay. Graves would look pretty good in like a fifties tuxedo, like a pinstripe or something. That would work. I hope they bring that pay per view back next year just to see our little dream come to fruition. I really do. Well when we get hired next week by WWE when the old man listens to this week's show, I'll be our first order of business. My God, who are these guys? That and cutting uh cutting all the like higher ups that people make decisions cutting all their access to Twitter so they can't read the stupid things idiots post on there. <laughs> so it's sort of like, yeah. oh, yeah, we'll do that. No, no, we'll not. Fuck Give me your you, Twitter. Kevin Dunn. Yeah, you Bucky Beaver-looking motherfucker, to quote my hero, Jim Cornette. <laughs> Why don't you go cry to Jim yeah. Cornette? Why don't you go cry? Literally. All right, let's get into Monday Night Raw, Travis. It's a pretty good show this week. Nothing special, but, you know, it's Monday Night Raw. Here are your official results. Finn Balor defeated Elias Sampson, 10 minutes and 10 seconds via pinfall. Anderson and Gallows defeated the Hardy Boys, 4 minutes and 25 via pinfall. Shocking. Sasha Banks and Bailey defeated Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss at 9 minutes and 40 seconds via pinfall. Goldust defeated R-Truth in 5 minutes and 42 seconds via pinfall. Akira <clears throat> Tozawa and Cedric Alexander defeated Noam Dar and Neville at 9.43 via pinfall. Bray Wyatt defeated Seth Rollins. At 17 minutes and 2 seconds via pinfall. 17 minutes and 2 seconds. I know. For a Raw main event. Damn. But we'll get there. We'll get there. Show kicked off with Big Cass. Makes his way to the rings. And uh, his big man heel song number 27 generic that you can pick on WWE, <laughs> WWE 2K18. It'll be in there. Uh, not a big Bacon fan of his. Six. I never like people's theme songs when it's brand new and it's the first time I hear it. I'm like, nope, don't like. Put back the old one. But I'm sure I'll get used to this one. Uh, he broke down his ass kicking of Enzo at the pay-per-view and was actually getting some solid heat from the crowd, which is true. He was kind of getting, you know, puts the roster on notice, gets some heat with the fans. You know, he says yeah. he's, uh, he's coming for the WWE Universal Championship. I thought it was a solid opening. And... Uh, uh, I thought his promo at the beginning was a little was a little slow. Yep. But I thought it was the worst one he's done since he's been a heel. But it picked up towards the end, though. I find, um, I, I, like towards the end, uh, the Big Show came out because Cass said that no one is on his level. You know, he's seven feet. No one's on my level. And Big Show was like, uh, "Excuse me, excuse me, sir." Comes down to the ring. Yeah. Uh, apparently. Um, Cass is now working the house shows with Big Show. So that looks like a feud that's coming. So two big guys. I think that's what Big Show should so do. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I will say, if anything, you know, as sour as we all were on them breaking them up, the fans are really invested in this angle. It's, it's translating every week on television. It says something when Big Show gets a hell of a pop. That's how invested they are in this angle. That's yeah, the best pop I've pop. seen him get in ages. Yep. You know? I agree. But that match does nothing for me. It's a lot to do with the big show. The yeah. Less than cast. I know he's in great shape again, but man, it's just come on. Yeah, like, I don't, move I don't... on, you know? But I get it for angle-wise. Um, We didn't even mention the Enzo stuff earlier with getting thrown off of buses, but that's whatever. It's it, that's Oh, too. yeah. There's apparently a lot of heat on Enzo and Cass backstage. I just remember that now that we brought up that's Enzo. That's true. Let's talk about that real quick. Uh, we'll get to Cass first because that's the shortest one, and it doesn't seem like there's as much heat on him. But Cass is a big Donald Trump man and likes to talk about it, and that rubs a lot of people in WWE the wrong way. So there is some perceived heat on Cass for that. Can you please Photoshop him with a, like a Trump hat or I something? Can. I will. Oh, I'll do that you. just for you. You're amazing. Uh, Enzo, on the other hand, got kicked off a bus. Was it on the European tour or was it just on a loop? I have no clue where it was. Okay, well, regardless, the WWE was on a loop. They were on a tour. Uh, Enzo was apparently being so annoying that the big dog, Roman Reigns, says, this, this bus is my yard. You got to get out. Kicked him off the bus. He got the mistreatment where he wasn't allowed to change in the locker room. And apparently he was pretty salty that the tag team broke up because let's be honest, Cass has the upside here. Cass is going to be WWE's focus. What's Enzo going to do? 
I just want to know who's playing the role of Henry Godwin in this new Bone Street Crew backstage <laughs> click going on. <laughs> yeah, God. Man. That, you know what? And I've talked to our buddy Tonka from Grapple, you know, cheap plug to Grapple Vision, all that stuff. Yeah, go check out he, Grapple Vision. It really rubs him the wrong way. And I agree. If I was a wrestler in the business and you wake me up at 3 a.m. for wrestler's court, I'm going to be fucking pissed. Who the oh, fuck are yeah. you? Oh, I don't care. Yeah. I mean, I get that in real life, too. You, That's how it kind of is with jobs and seniority. Yeah. People like to pull their trump card bullshit or whatever, but... I don't know. I mean, I guess it's good to have a locker room leader, but how many fucking agents were on the bus in the first place? There's enough fucking higher ups that, you know, fuck you, Roman. If I'm Enzo Amore, I'm at least going to stand up for myself. How annoying was he really being for you to kick him off the goddamn bus on the side of the road or whatever? I mean, because he's not I mean, like, did he he's pull in his a locker... wiener out? What the fuck <laughs> did he do? He's in a locker room where 95% of the people there, even some people that aren't in the ring, could probably kick his ass in a shoot fight, right? I don't see him pissing yeah. off the entire bus of people to the point of getting pissed off. What did he do? That's what I want to know. And no one seems to, to have that information yeah. on hand. Um, I don't know if this whole story is true. I, who knows? Because at the end of the day, Roman's no fucking saint, Mr. S drug Suspension. You yeah, know what I mean? So exactly. who, who are you, Roman? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, big dog. Did you rent the bus? Is your name on the fucking, on, on the fucking rental form? Huh, Roman? Who do you think you are, bruh? I don't know. I don't know, but I mean, if he did do something fucked up, that, that's what we're saying. It's alleged. We don't know, but yeah, that was in the news this week, apparently. And it's, it's I can picture the scenario in my head, and it's like kind of like a little mini movie. Yeah. I don't know. Well, it'll be like a Saturday evening movie on Showtime. The Enzo Amore story. I got kicked off the bus. Yes. It flows so well. The Enzo Amore story. Right? Like, I just, I, this has nothing to do with the podcast, but I just took off my hoodie without taking off my headset. So I just feel like I should get some props for that. You really are the Canadian miracle. I am, right? <laughs> like, I heard every word you said, and now I'm, I'm, I'm much more comfortable. It's not as hot in my apartment. I feel good now. And if anybody's, Blessed be thy name. And if anybody's, <laughs> if anybody's wondering why I'm wearing a hoodie in July, it's because I have my air conditioning cranked up to the top. But it's so hot today that, whew, getting hot. Oh, yeah, here. we're roasting over here. Yeah. My shit's on, like, 50 degrees. My Whoa. AC, so. Yeah, I love, uh, man. I don't know how I live my life for so long without air conditioning. But well, that my struggles with temperature aside, <laughs> we, had, we had Finn Balor versus... You want to take to Twitter about it, Renee Young and yeah. Bennett? I mean... I guess I'll just go back to sweating because I don't have air conditioning because yeah. I'm a, you know, privileged white male. Sorry, a cisgendered privileged white male. Sorry, don't come after me. I need a Sarkeesian. Fucking cunt. All right, Finn Balor versus Elias Sampson. <laughs> Who cares? I don't care. I don't care yeah. about any of this. I, I had a chat with a buddy this week on Twitter. I didn't really think about it. it. Two or five lives in the dumps. There's nothing for Balor right now. Put him in two or five live. Put him against Neville. I'd love to see those matches. He Why totally not? classifies as Grizzly. Why it's, not? it's totally a case of fuck it now with Balor. You've totally squandered it. Why not? Yeah, they really did. Man, they don't know what to do with him at all. It's so sad. Uh, I did like how the um, Hardys came out right after the match and kind of posed with Balor. I like them together. I like Balor with the Hardy Boys. I don't know yeah, why. I just, I just, I just think it looks cool. I feel you know, like all the fangirls are out, of course, on social media this week with that picture oh. everywhere. Oh my god, oh, my the god. fangirls! My god, talking about, talking about the abs and and Jeff Hardy being, you know, a Hardys and Balor guy. in the same picture. Jeez. Jesus, just leave the panties at the door. Bring your rubber boots because it's gonna get it's gonna get a little bit wet around here. <laughs> yep, the swamps of avarice. <laughs> Uh, the Hardys came out uh, leading to a promo where they discussed their failure to win back the tag team titles at WWE Great Balls of Fire. Jez says that the other teams are thinking that they are done and that maybe they should fade away and classify themselves as obsolete. God, I fucking... I'm not doing it. I pop... No. Do it. Do it. <laughs> I'm not doing it. All right, say obsolete. I'm not... I told no, you I was you, numb not to you. Jesus. Say obsolete. Thank you. Ha! I got someone here who got my back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, dude, I popped yeah. so hard when he said that. Like, I was lying down watching the show. I sat up and I was like, obsolete! <laughs> I fucking <laughs> loved his intro in TNA when, like, uh, Rebby Star was playing. I just like, kept the... replaying that same part or oh, whatever. I did. Oh, his theme music. I did. I, I liked did. it a lot. I it would get stuck it. in my head for days. When he's just like, oh, one. Wonderful. And she's like playing the piano, and then Jeff comes out 
Oh God, I love that. That was. I'd from, like uh, to think we see Rebby come in as a package when they go broken. If fuck, that comes, I hope so. Like, I trends, hope please. so because it has that. To happen. How do you not do that? You know. Okay, I know. I know this isn't a, a dating podcast, but for all you single men out there, find a girl who has your back the way Rebby Hardy has Matt's back. Have you seen her on Twitter? Oh with, yeah, with the hashtag "fuck the owl" and all that, dude. That girl with is with Lita and everyone in sight, pretty much. I love it. Rubs her the wrong way. Love it. Yeah, she's a she's a hell of a lady. She's a fiery redhead. She's a redhead, right? Uh, allegedly. Okay, she's a redhead. That's what we're, we're that's why I'm <laughs> leaving it. I'm leaving it. Um, it was cute how they teased the broken stuff. I like that. Um, but it also gets me like ah. I need to. I need. I need the broken gimmick. Give it to me. The nostalgia is yeah. wearing off. Uh, this led to a match between the Hardys and Anderson and Gallows, where Anderson and Gallows defeated them. What? Yeah. This is why I'm hoping. This is what I'm hoping that they're starting to go on a losing streak, and this is what's going to lead to them being broken. That's what I'm really hoping. And then say so yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. I completely forgot about it. It was one of my favorite parts of the show. So uh, Anderson and Gallows they defeat the Hardys, and then the Revival, a team that I think I asked last week or the week before, where are they? What are they doing with them? Well, now we know. Yeah. The Revival came out and laid a hefty beating on the Hardys right after their match with Anderson and Gallows. So it looks like we're getting a Hardy Boys and the Revival feud. Big big fan. Of that and this could very well be that tag program with the hardys that transitions them to the broken gimmick and elevates the revival at the same time yeah like they just keep beating the hardys until matt finally loses his fucking mind and they go broken that would be awesome that would be great i'm i sign me up i love the revival i'm so happy they're back i'm glad they're getting into the mix with a tag team like the hardys that's a that seems like a big push from wwe so you know, and I can also, because, you know, we always talk about the lack of babyface tag teams on Raw, right? So I can also see the revival transitioning Cesaro and Sheamus back to babyfaces. So let's be honest, right. it's hard not to like Cesaro and Sheamus. Yeah, you know what I mean? I and I think they, they could easily go back to babyfaces overnight. This is the most I've liked Sheamus in his entire career. I just could not agree with anything more you've said on this episode so yeah. far, probably, than that. Just, I don't know. They, him and Cesaro seem to have this awesome chemistry. Now they got their entrance worked out, you know, with the with the thumbs, was it thumbs down or thumb to the side? Like we are the bar. I think it's really really good. It, they're uh, they, doing the Zangi from Street Fighter the movie when yeah, he did the thumb. Thing. That's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, up next we had the Mizzies. Uh, you know, a little. Uh, <laughs> Little, little. Better, he, the, you know what? Thank God for the Miz because he made this so much better than it had any business being. Oh yeah, they did. Um, the Miz won the award for the greatest man in WWE. Oh no, actually, he was pretty sure he was going to win, but it turned out that the, you know, the the winner of that particular award was Dean Ambrose for some reason. Yeah. I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> I can't stand this feud. This led to, yeah. you know, the, the, the Miz Taraj attacking Ambrose in the ring, which led to Seth God, Rollins. What a sh... I'm sorry, Eric. What a shitty goddamn name for a group. And I mean, I've heard some stinkers. I really have, but this is bad. It's, it's, ugh, it's, it's bad. It's cringy because it, it's, it, oh, look how silly and it's, it's ironic and it, fuck you. No, I, I agree with you. I, I agree with you. I think it's a dumb name, but here's why I think it works. Because the Miz's character is so self-centered so egotistical that of course he's going to name his group after himself right that's the only reason yeah. that i'm like okay I'll, I'll give it a pass because the miz is an e egotistical heel of course he would name his group after himself it's all about him uh so this Hashtag made again again we had hardy's and uh and uh finn balor together so the ladies got all moist for that but now we had Ambrose and Rollins teasing yet again another Shield reunion. So you know the ladies were moist as fuck for this one. I, on the other hand, was dry as the Sahara Desert. Am I the only person <laughs> in the world that doesn't want the Shield reunion no, to happen? No, you're not. You're not. I'm with you. I don't care about the Shield. I, I, I don't, I, we're not huge Ambrose fans, but I think every guy from the Shield has done a great job from separating themselves from those days. You know what I mean? And I don't, uh, it's a step back. Yeah, even a one shot. I mean, save it for a fucking Survivor Series. That's when I would do it. Yeah. Because then, it, cause then you sense. have the excuse, well, it's a tag match. They have to do it. Blah, blah, blah. I don't that know. That makes sense. Yeah. I'd, I'd be okay with a Survivor Series. I don't want a reunion. 
Uh, Roman Reigns doesn't need to be held back by the Shield right now. He's in a great place as a Sigils. I don't think he needs it. And I mean, Rollins. I think it, Rollins and Ambrose will probably benefit from it because they're not doing shit. And people, really, if you know, all these people go, well, I just want my wrestling to make sense, but they want this reunion. Now listen to me. Nothing makes if sense. If this happens. This doesn't make fucking sense. He turned on them two years ago, and he not only turned on them, he was like an ultimate prick. You betrayed your own brothers type storyline. Yeah. Why would they? Oh, cool, man. No big deal. It doesn't make sense to do it. Why oh, do you guys want this? You saved me from Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. Cool, bro. We're friends now. It, yeah, really. I'll just like, forget that you turned your back on me. That's cool. Don't worry about it. It's all under the bridge, bro. Yeah, it's dumb. It's really dumb. But, I mean, you know. I guess the Shield are popular, and they, you know, they're going to keep teasing it. It reminds me of when DX came back in 06. It was Ugh. like, why? Ugh. They spent th like two years feuding in like 02 and 03, and then yeah. everything's cool. Everything's all like, good. I don't know. I hate that in wrestling sometimes. Yeah. Because like, you'll build this feud where they hate each other because that makes sense because one turned on the other, and then a couple years later, you're just like, eh. You know those 85 matches we had every week on Raw where we beat the shit out of each other? Eh. Water if that's the case, though, like if we keep analyzing that, we're both going to come off like hypocrites. Because how many times did Randy Savage and Hogan flip flop, yeah. and we loved it every time? That's a good. You point. know what I mean? That's, that's it's hard point. to like. There's a fine line, but still, this I don't want to see it. And I, I'm glad you totally agree. Well, with me let's that. let's let's just let's just say this right now: the Shield ain't no Randy Savage and Hulk Hogan. Let's let's just oh, put that fuck. out there right now. Not no even one ever will be. Not even in the same fucking universe, as far as I'm concerned. Nope. Um, nope. Up next, we had a tag team match. Because women, Sasha Banks and Bailey versus Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss. Blah, rematch from last week. Blah, don't care. Blah. Hated, hated the finish. Totally hated the finish. Oh, we're fucking, I'm living Wait, this is where we're going again, really? I'm, because I'm, this worked out great last time. The uh, I have a dream Bailey who rolls up Alexa Bliss for the win while Nia Jax just took herself out by running into a cushioned <sighs> guardrail. Cool. S a lot of people speculating Bailey's going heel. Yeah, I still say it's Sasha. Sasha it makes too. sense for it to be Sasha. Yeah, I agree. Uh, there, there was a Goldust promo backstage. He needs his wig desperately. Who was it? I think it was Kenton last week posted like Goldust really needs his wig back. And uh, uh, what the fuck was her name? Uh, uh, Marlena. Marlena retweeted him. So I thought that was pretty Wow. Funny. Yeah. I thought that shout was out to funny. Ken. I think I'm the last man on earth that he hasn't blocked. So thank you, Ken. Yes. I didn't shout that out earlier. Don't block and, Travis. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. I did not know that. So I'm going to check that out. I love that episode. <laughs> you know what? Believe it or not, I know my last appearance, I was a little hard on Mr. Ron Killings. Well, let, me, let me redeem him a little bit. Right. I'm going to say this. Right. I'm oh, going to oh, say man. this. Come at me. And the comments were down below. This was my match of the night, and it was a shame the crowd was so dead. I was shocked at how good this match it was. It was, right? I don't know. It was. I liked it. Uh, oh, but before the Goldust and R-Truth match, we got another WWE 2K18 trailer, but this time we're with Kurt Angle, where he investi investigates Seth Rollins' arson of the WWE warehouse. Fucking Christ, these fucking commercials are so good. I know. Who saw this coming, by the way? I just thought that was going to be the other trailer. Yeah, no, I thought that was so good. A great way to announce that he's like the pre-order bonus and shit. But like the again, way another guy in a trailer looking way better than they're making him look on actual WWE TV. <laughs> but I think it's more like more apparent with Seth Rollins than with um, with Kurt Angle because I actually really like what's going on with Kurt Angle. We'll get to that very soon. Uh, but then with that, after the promo for WWE 2K18, which I might actually pre-order, it'll be like the first game in. Of this generation, of the Xbox One, PS4, Switch generation, that I'm going to pre-order. Just because I want I don't know. I haven't seen a lot of gameplay footage or anything on it. I don't know if you have. No. I, mean, I just hope it's updated fully this time. Because I hate that the most about these games. Because last time, the draft happened, and it was just so dated when it came out. I, that's why I didn't even bother. I'm really hoping that their universe... Well, well, not their universe mode, sorry. The story mode of the game is way less repetitive than last year's. Last year's, just to move out of NXT, I had to face um, Hideo Itami about 85 times, beating him 84 times, Ugh. never moving up. I never got a title shot because it took me so long to get out of NXT. I never made the main roster. 
it took me so long. I just kept winning and winning and winning, and they wouldn't put me in any storylines. And I was just like, this is the worst. Yeah. I was planning he, on doing. Uh... I was planning on doing a whole series of like going from NXT all the way to winning the WWE Championship on my channel. But after like ten videos, I'm like, I'm still in NXT. <laughs> after like, ten videos, this. just call him Hideo and me. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> at, at one point, I just went Hideo Tommy again, like <laughs> again. Did. Did he, in fact, tease the GTS 84 of those times? No, like he, he never, used to do every fucking match? Never had the chance. Never gave him the opportunity, sir. God. Oh, God. I, I would like to cordially invite you one day to like our first ever wrestling theme reset button show. I'd love to have you on oh, that. Oh, God. Hell yeah. Sign me up. I yeah, love to do that. Dude, I've been, playing so, I play, I've been playing wrestling games since I was a wee lad on the NES. I had WrestleMania, that terrible, terrible fucking game. Where you just kind of smash buttons and eventually someone would do a special move, or you could jump. Oh, over it was the like top Mortal rope. Kombat, kind of. No, like, well, yeah, kind of. Like it was like a, you know, a side, a two D side scrolling fighter, right? Yeah. In a ring. And they would Although, do like weird, th- like fireballs and shit. Uh, not on NES. Yeah. That was on. Uh, oh, the NES. Okay, yeah, that, that had was like on, Honky Tonk Man. So. Yeah, that was on Super Nintendo, like WrestleMania the arcade game. Yeah, that's the other one. Ooh. I actually like that game, even though it's terrible. I kind of like so it. It's so bad it's good, yeah, but as exactly. a game, it's shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's... It's more, it, that's nostalgia speaking right there. That's that's not uh, an actual good game. It's just Back in the day, though, I played the shit out of it, and I liked it as well, a Well, hell kid, yeah. So. They were doing that digitized rest, uh, character thing where they like actually filmed it like Mortal Kombat. That was cool. That was kind of new back then. Plus, uh, it was the only game to feature made in the USA Lex Luger besides, like, Raw, so that's a yes, plus. that's true. That's true. And all the theme songs. God, that, I'm going to go back and play that. Uh, but Gold Dust, Gold Dust and R-Truth, who would have thought? This is actually turning into a really fun feud. I like it. Yeah. And I want Glad to-, to see Gold Dust got the, uh, the dominant win. Yep. I mean, why wouldn't he after all this? I hope. Man, I want to see him in that IC title picture. If this I is, really do, too. I hope, they give him, Gold Dust uh, I hope they give him at least one title. Like, not the universal title, but give him, like, a, the, the IC title for a bit. You know, just for fun. Maybe have him or, drop it you to know, a younger guy. Add him to the Miz's group. He's a Hollywood gimmick. I know that yeah. kind of sounds weird, but I don't know. Why not? Get Miz to get all the actor wrestlers together. Yep. They could call themselves like um, SAG, the Screen Actors Guild. That's the name of their, that's the name of their stable. We are the SAG. There uh, was a stable in TNA in like the early days. The Vince Russo called SAG, Sports Entertainment Extreme. So I'm sure you get away with SAG. God, yeah, that's that. That sounds, that sounds like a Vince Russo idea. <laughs> it spells sex. Let <laughs> me tell you, bro. Yeah, yeah, I can't do Vince Russo. Let me tell you, bro. I, Holy shit. I, I need that sound bited for my channel. I know we're in the middle of your show, but I'm doing it. I'm, I'm, I need that. You, you know what we're doing. New Jack and Vince Russo travel oh, the world. We're going to do it. A little skit. Holy shit. And Stu Hart. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh my God. Side me up. Let me tell you, Stu. <laughs> Bro, I, I put it. the greatest faction in sports entertainment that you have ever seen. S E X, bro. It spells is he gonna, sex. Is it gonna make Diana look like a whore? <laughs> <laughs> your your fucking Stu Hart is so impressive. It's like I don't it's... think you have any clue how good your Vince Russo is on on the same hand. When you go back, I don't know if you knew you could do that. No, I. But I, my God, here's a funny story. Here's a funny story. I told Robbie like three years ago when we first started the Kayfabe Today podcast, like on uh, Ben's site that I could do a Vince Russo impression, and I never did it for him. And now on the podcast that he's normally on, that he's not on for the summer, because he had to go to America and get some American pussy with his giant English arms, I did it. So, Robbie, I hope you're listening, and I hope you appreciated that. I'm going to tweet him after and say oh. I did my Vince Russo impression this week. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> it's the first time I did it on air. It's very, very, uh, very, ex- very special it's moment landmark. here moment right there yeah a little special moment here that's so robbie that was for you uh then we had brock coming out for a little uh little promo we had kurt angle arise and he puts over last night's great ball of air pay-per-view braun is hurt and he has no idea when he will return he brings out universal champion brock lesnar and paul Heyman, and he brings up that brock beating him at wrestlemania 19 and says that brock kept uh, keeps getting better and better and then they even shaked hands which i thought was surprising 
Uh, Angle brings yeah. up SummerSlam in the Universal title match, but Heyman didn't think he was there for a creative meeting, which I, I liked. I, I don't do creative meetings in front of people. I thought that was funny. Uh, yeah. Roman Reigns arrives as Heyman and Brock look, uh, look to leave. Angle is pissed that Reigns tried to... <laughs> Angle is pissed that Reigns tried to murder Braun last night, but says that the guy in the ring... Um, the guys in the ring were part of the Attitude Era and blew up anything and everything. He took out Braun when Angle couldn't deal with him, and Lesnar is never around to do it, which I thought was a really good line from uh, from Reigns. Uh, Reigns feels he's owed one uh, owed one and wants Brock at Slummer, uh, SummerSlam. Brock calls bullshit on this idea because Reigns doesn't deserve shit. Potty uh, mouth Brock yeah, in the I, house. Oh, fuck, I love it. Samoa Joe is now here, and he claims that they were all living in a fantasy land. He's here to bring them back to reality. Brock says the reality is that he kicked Joe's ass last night, but Joe vows to put him to sleep. Joe says Brock escaped at the pay-per-view and Reigns has never beat him. Heyman says Joe will never get another title match. Joe says Heyman is protecting Brock from him because he knows Joe is the man and will beat him. Reigns mocks Joe for losing to Brock and Joe says Reigns is awful talkative after losing to Braun last night. Sick burn. Angle then books Joe versus Reigns for next week and the winner gets Brock at SummerSlam. Best part of the whole fucking show. This yeah, was great. This was great. This was so good and I can't believe it. But Roman's promo was good. He had some good lines. And when he, they let him be himself, yep. they're always good. That's the thing. Just about to say. Imagine that. You let a guy be himself and he's successful. Huh. What a world we live in. And they did announce, you know, next week it's Joe and Roman. The, or this Monday, I should say, when yeah. we're recording this. The winner gets a shot of Brock. I still say early prediction. I think Braun interferes in that and calls it. Then we yep. still don't have an outcome. And then it's four-way like a lot of people are predicting. That would be cool. I wouldn't mind that. I mean, we, d we have been getting a lot of four-ways recently, but eh, with the guys involved, it could be good. Maybe the match will go longer for six than six minutes. Cause Brock... Or you could just have Roman win, and then you maybe you could do Joe and Strowman in an attraction heel versus heel match. I would love to see that yeah, fucking match. Yeah, that would be good. My only issue is that there's no real reason for them to face off. Maybe if they could get like the winner of Braun and Joe gets the winner of Reigns and... Um, you have Braun come down and attack Roman this Monday, and then that costs Joe his shot, right? So there, there right. you go, build an heat off that. There I you guess. go, just like that. That's where you go with it. Yeah. Then we had the 205 live tag team match of Akira Tozawa and Cedric Alexander versus Neville and Noam Dar. I made a sandwich. I did not. I I, I know you made a sandwich for this because it was the cruiserweights. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. But I'm one of those sick fucks that watches every week. I will say two cents on it. Um. I did like it was nice to see it's, uh, Neville finally eat a pen because they have been making him look. He just hasn't lost in no, like months. Ever. And it, it was surprising. Um, but yeah, the next night they followed it up with um, him just getting his heat back pretty much. He attacked Tazawa in the middle. Tazawa was matched, just beat the shit out of him. So they did make him look like a vicious dominant heel. I still say there's going to be the rematch and Tazawa finally gets it when he separates himself from the Titus brand. I think he's just going to get fed up with Titus' shit and go serious. Yeah. And that's going to segue eventually this fall to, I think, uh, Babyface versus Babyface. They're going to go back to more of the competitive, what it was in the beginning with Cedric and Tozawa. A more cool. serious presentation. Hopefully they have that kind of foresight. I doubt it, but I would like to think. We can give them the benefit that's of it. the doubt. That's all I got on the little flip-flopping guys on 205 Live this <laughs> week. Flippy-dippy bullshit. <laughs> and then our main event. <laughs> Seth Rollins versus Bray Wyatt again. Where I was just like, oh, cool. Rollins is going to get his win back. But no. Wyatt beat him. Clean, I think. Yeah. Was it clean? Clean. Yeah. Completely clean. Jeez. 17 minutes. <laughs> but a good, yeah. a good little match. It wasn't Oh, horrible. sorry. Before the main event, we had uh, Corey Graves getting that mysterious text going backstage. Angle saying he can't let it get out. And that next week, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. I'm going to tell everybody what my yep. secret is. And that's it. But this, okay. Main event, I thought it was okay. Uh, Bray beat Rollins. He disappears, and the Miz, Curtis Axel, and Dallas, uh, Bo Dallas arrive and circle the ring, shield style, and then attack. They beat him down, but Ambrose then makes the save with a chair, laying into the Miz with several shots, which, God damn, those chair shots looks brutal. Like, even though they were just on the back, they, they sounded fucking rough. Like, he was swinging oh. that chair. How unintimidating did that shield impersonation come off? Did that come yeah. off like vicious attackers or did that come off like date rapers at a sorority? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that one. It, yeah. Yeah, I agree. It wasn't uh it didn't have the same uh oomph, so, if you will. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit off of that. A little lacking with the oomph. The oomph factor was lacking. <laughs> uh yeah, and as I said, mention uh we can hear Kurt Angle talking 
on the phone saying, why don't you come here next week and we'll tell the whole world together, I love you. And then that's how Raw ended, which was smart. This made me so excited for Monday. Good cliffhanger. It's nice to have one of those once in a while. It's good television. Yeah, which, I mean, you know, that was the Attitude Era. Cliffhanger after cliffhanger after cliffhanger after cliffhanger. That's all it was. I mean, yeah. And it, we all have to remember this is still, whether we like it or not, sports entertainment. This is bad as we want it to be the old days, like the 80s when it was just wrestling or whatever. No, it's not. And we, it was fine. It was fine. You I know? like it. I've been very intrigued with this Angle storyline. I like how they get Corey Graves involved. Um, I'm anxious to see if they're ever going to kind of give us a reason why Graves is involved. You know, like, I don't know. I bought, man, I have bought you a ticket. I've got my ticket because the Dixie train's coming. I got a feeling. <laughs> you think so, eh? Why I'm, not? Would you pop? I would pop. I'd pop just it. Just to see yeah. the looks on the faces. Yeah. Because you know they're going to do that crowd shot where people are just like, what the fuck? It'll be the biggest shocker and the most heat we've seen. If they keep it under wraps good and don't let the cat out of the bag since Eric Bischoff did it on Raw, like I said earlier. Yeah, exactly. Would, yeah. Yeah. She would get so much fucking heat. It's brilliant. It'd be Still. really fun. It'd be really fun. Now, what I'm worried about is that eh, it's going to be Stephanie. I don't. I'm the, and trust me, I'm the last person that I'm so tired of these fucking authority storylines. It's almost 20 years of this shit. But I think they sprinkle it in like they're doing now. They're not overdoing it with Kurt Angle and on, on SmackDown. You know what I mean? Just yeah. sprinkle in Dixie here and there just for the heat segments yeah. that make sense. I agree. I agree. I thought I think that would be great. And conf I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just remembering my history wrong. But wasn't there a kind of storyline with Kurt Angle, Triple H and Stephanie back in the day where there was like some tension of the sexual variety between Stephanie and Angle, I don't. Maybe yeah, I'm... they uh, they went to SummerSlam 2000, I think, on that angle. Okay, so heel I'm... versus heel. Okay, so I'm not crazy. That actually was <gasps> the thing that happened. Yep. So maybe this is a continuation of that. Could you imagine? Like years later, you get like the feud keeps going. I I would think that would be cool. Like it would just be like a, a something we don't see very often. I think it could be really fun and entertaining. But we'll have to wait and see. A lot see. of people are predicting that's what it's going to be. It's going to lead to a match with Triple H. So that's probably the last thing I want to see. Yeah. I'm just so tired. Why does it always have to be Triple H? Needs it's like, Dad, I need another match. <laughs> Dad, I need a match. Put me in. All right, pal. You're getting angle. He's fucking your wife. <laughs> I'm surprised, honestly, that... If he does, they'll even let Kurt have one match with his health. Look at Daniel Bryan. Like, where... That's... <sighs> You can't – how how can they justify of Kurt Angle but not letting Daniel Bryan compete? I, you know what I mean? I don't know. It, it's – oh, boy. The Daniel Bryan situation. Poor bastard. Poor bastard. But I that, don't want to be that guy. Sorry. You can move on off that. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, and that was Monday Night Raw. We're going to get into SmackDown here in just a little bit. we got to pay some bills, even though I don't get paid to play these ads. We'll pretend. And thanks for taking away my monetization, YouTube. That was really nice of you. So we'll be right back. Here's an ad from the Marking Out podcast. This is Marking Out. Hello, it's Brandon. And Dave. And we do a weekly pro wrestling podcast called Marking Out. And you can check us out on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, and MarkingOut.com. You guys are awesome. As always. And we're back. And we're all happy because we got to listen to some advertising. Isn't advertising fun? But now, it's, it's, it's time to stop promoting to you kind people. It's time to give you what you came here for. Smackdown Live Recap. That's what everybody comes gender for. Gender mania. That's yeah. what I came for. There you go. Well, speaking of gender mania, he was in a match with the Perfect Ten and Ty Dillinger and defeated him in 6 minutes and 28 seven, seven, bleh, 6 minutes and 28 seconds. Fucking Christ. Six minutes and 27 seconds via pinfall. Fuck. Easy for Same length say. as the Great Balls of Fire main event, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. It took me longer to say that than the Great Balls of Fire main event lasted. Yeah. <laughs> Xavier Woods defeated Jay Uso at 225 via pinfall. Natalia and Tamina defeated Becky. Mm, Fuckface Lynch and Charlotte at 8 minutes and 40 seconds via pinfall. AJ Styles and John Cena defeated Rusev and Kevin Owens at 13 minutes and 35 seconds via pinfall. So big news at a house show in New York at Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena. Get over yourself, New York. Uh, AJ Styles beat Kevin Owens. For the United States Championship. And God, when I read that, I was like, oh my God, Owens is hurt. I, I, need to, I need to go lie down. But no. But no, WWE just likes 
making terrible decisions. So they put the strap on some no-name kid from the indies instead of keeping it on a real star like Kevin Owens. <laughs> Dude, I posted on Twitter. I was like, who's this AJ Styles kid? And who did he ever beat? Why does he deserve a title shot? And some dumb kid was like, Dude, are you fucking serious? AJ Styles is a goddamn star. And I'm like, you fucking idiot. Congratulations, you fell for it. Of course oh, I know I who AJ Styles is. I definitely took you out of your page this week, and I put out a tweet that said Roman Reigns is greater than New Japan, and I got called a crackhead and within like two minutes. <laughs> I saw just... that. I was so proud of you. <laughs> God. Oh, I love that. It's, he's I walked right. a mile in your shoes for once, man. Good. How was it? It's scary, isn't it? I actually enjoyed it. I'm going to do it more. It's, it's fun, eh? It's fun upsetting people, especially with stuff that, like, is clearly a joke. Like, I try to make sure that my shit, like, if you read it twice, you're like, oh, he's kidding. And most of the time, I think I could achieve that. Sometimes, no, I'll admit it. But, um, like, I mean, you asked me if I was moving to Detroit earlier. <laughs> so maybe my trolling <laughs> isn't as high level as I think it is. <laughs> and people just like, he's insane. I don't like him anymore. <laughs> so it's going to make me sound like a terrible person, but the, the point of me trolling like that is to see people get so worked up over something that small it makes me feel better about my life. So right? it's like kind of therapeutic in a way. So right? I see why you do it. See? Why do you think I'm always such a good mood? Because <laughs> I just watch other people get upset, and it makes me laugh. It's all about that and catching Pokemon and some wrestling. There you go. It's all it takes to make Eric happy. There you go. Upsetting people and making towns. That's all I do. Get your shots. So the fake U.S. champ is here. Styles gets a great reaction. Says that Battleground came early at Madison Square Garden last week. He says he's an upgrade over Kevin Owens. You fucking liar. But this is all about the U.S. title and what it represents. The U.S. championship used to take uh, the U.S. champion used to take on all comers in the U.S. Open Challenge, and he wants to give uh, bring that back. This title has been overlooked, but from now on, this title will show you who is the best. And if anyone disagrees, tonight is your lucky night. And here comes John Cena. Of course he does. To a monster reaction. Yeah, rightfully so. Greatest greatest champion of all time. Of um, course it would be Mr. Stand Up For Yourself, John Cena, coming out. He accepts But it was all right. He, he accepts the challenge, but Kevin Owens and Kevin Mo Owens' music hits, which I was like, okay, come on. Wh where are you, Kevin Owens? He comes out, and he's not happy. He's not happy. Rightfully so. He says no one wants to see this match again and that he is the rightful holder of the title, and people want to see him win it back. I loved when he was like, nobody wants to see you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, awesome. And then Cena says he can't see him. Oh, I hate, I hate, I hated that line. Uh, Owens just wants him to leave, and he should step up and do something about it. Rusev then attacks Cena, and Owens attacks Style, and he and Rusev stands tall. Which you smell that, folks? That's a tag match of brewing. But it was yep. a fun way to open holla, up the holla, show. Holla. I thought it was a really yeah. fun way to open up the show. You got two really good baby faces in John Cena and AJ Style, two really good heels in Kevin Owens and Rusev, and it's SmackDown, so of course it's going to be a tag team main event. And it was good. I thought it was great. Throwing his hair out again, it looks like. It good. does. I think he looks good. Good. I think he looks pretty um, good. I think the because I haven't been on your show since Cena's came back or whatever. I right. think the uh, the flag match is such a waste. It of is John Cena and Rusev. It is. They've done it before. Not the flag match, but they've had this America versus. Well, back then it was Russia, but now it's Bulgaria. You know, they've had this. And you know. It's like 4th of July is fucking over. What, why are we doing this now? Nah, I don't know. If they would have done it on the 4th of July, I would have given it a pass. Why didn't they just yeah? Why didn't they just do it on that fucking SmackDown? It was on the fourth. That's what I thought they were gonna do in that Cena promo when he came out. Oh, they're gonna have a flag match on SmackDown. Cool, but then they're like Battleground. I'm like, what? Oh. You mean like yeah. three weeks after the Fourth of July? Uh, okay. Does anybody? Care? I still think it's it should be Nakamura and Cena babyface versus babyface SummerSlam attraction match. Wow. And I think Nakamura comes out getting the rub. That's how you elevate Nakamura right why there. Not? Do classy. It makes sense. I mean, at this point in his career, Cena should be starting to put people over, which he does. I don't understand this we thing. We could still get that. We could still get that. So. Yeah. There's plenty of time till SummerSlam. Actually, not that much time. It's like next month, right? They better do it soon. Is SummerSlam a dual-branded pay-per-view? Uh, it is. It's okay, also cool. six hours again. <laughs> Stop reminding me. <laughs> we, have <laughs> champion, that time. we have champion Jinder Mahal versus Ty Dillinger. Any thoughts on this yep. match? It was the match. Yeah. It was okay. I mean, it, it it did what it needed to do for gender, you know. Uh, 
Ty Dellinger's not there yet. No, I mean, not, he'll not get quite. there. He, if he keeps it up. I mean, he's still over like Clover. It's a, good to see yeah, him back. I was just about to say he gets a great reaction. Got a new T-shirt for himself. I saw this week. So good. he's got more T-shirts than Mahal. <laughs> there you go. Uh, McCall, after the match, Jinder cut his usual promo, saying the fans don't like him because of who he is, but 1.3 billion people love him. He will bring hell to Randy Orton next week on SmackDown because he's bringing the Punjabi prison. So he's he carries. He's going to bring it on the plane. He's going to put it in the overhead. You know, it's gonna, he's bringing it. Jinder's got that in his backyard. He, he Two seconds it. on it real quick. Yeah. The, on the May Young Classic, there was a girl I saw on it, saw on it was the first ever competitor from India. Mm-hmm. And immediately, because of what they brainwashed with me with the stereotypical Indian stable bullshit, I was like, she, she could fit. But yeah, <laughs> I, I, I can see them doing that. Get all the races together. Segregation is the way to go. And when I, I feel dirty when I think that too, I'm like, what have they done to me? To the automatic, you know what I'm saying? It's like I hate that because I was always like, when I thought they might put Titus with the New Day for a second, I was like, oh fuck you, WWE. Yep. Got to put all the black guys together. Got to put all the Indians together. Got to put all the the Mexicans together. All the all the Japanese wrestlers together. None of this. Just no- lost Barik was all over again. Yeah, much. <laughs> it's like gang warfare in fucking 1997. Do you Wolf. remember that? The, uh, the, Unfortunately. It, well, the, the, the pay-per-view that Bret Hart got screwed at, if I'm not mistaken, was called Gang Warfare. If I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong. It was, yeah, it was like Gang something. The Survivor or Gang series. Rules. They always had Gang under rules. Ta- unders. Gang Rules with Gang a rules Z. With a Z, with I a think, Z. to be edgy. Because it's 90s, so everything had a Z. But yeah. Shout out to Zeus. <laughs> oh, God, with the Zs shaved into his hair on the side. That was great. Uh, Xavier Woods versus Jay Uso. I can't believe Xavier Woods won a match. I, I don't I can't believe he had a match. Yeah, just him. For one. It was good. I yeah. thought it was all right. I mean, it wasn't very long, so it, there was nothing to really get invested in. Um, but I like the Usos. I like the New Day. And I like where this is going. I like their feud. I'm just enjoying it. It's just fun to watch. Uh, then it we is, go. Uh, I, you know, a lot of people shit on the rap battle. I, I enjoyed it. I thought really? It was good. Did a lot of people shit on the rap battle? I but thought it was fucking I amazing. Like, man, it was hokey. It, it wasn't wrestling. I'm like, what the fuck do you want it to be? Do you want to watch AWA where it's just <laughs> match to match, or do you want, like, you know what you're getting into? I love into what when you, you just said. As I love what you just said as their defense. Oh, it's not wrestling, but I'm gonna go on on Twitter and cry about talking smack for three days. <laughs> Shaka Laka. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, we go backstage where Shane talks to Daniel Bryan on the phone and jokes that no one has asked about James Ellsworth. I have. Where is he? Naomi arrives and wants to know who her next challenger is. Charlotte, fucking Becky Lynch, Natalia, Lana, and Tamina arrive. Shane lazily books a five-way elimination match for Battleground, and the winner gets a title match at SummerSlam. Charlotte rightfully questions why Lana is in the match. Tamina defends uh, Lana for some reason, and Natalia says Charlotte is only there because of her family. And then they all laugh as Becky calls her Brett. Becky Lynch sucks. I am so over these... Oh, sorry. (laughs) I stopped reading the review, and I was reading his opinion. He says, I'm so over these multi-person matches, and I'm right there with them. I'm right. And I'm sorry, there. and I hate to say this consistently on my show when I'm on your show, but these segments with the women, especially on SmackDown, they suck. They're they're not good. No, they're not good I at don't, all. I don't know. It's they're they're not appealing to me. Uh, yeah, no, same here, same here. Then Carmella arrives with a petition from her attorney to bring Ellsworth back. Shane reads it and rips it up. Baron Corbin is interviewed and is asked about his issues with Nakamura. Corbin is afraid that he may hurt Nakamura, and tonight he teaches Nakamura a lesson. God, could you use Nakamura more in a sentence? Jesus Christ. Here, Nakamura decides he wants revenge for Corbin's recent act- uh, actions and attacks during Corbin's entrance, and they brawl into the crowd. I thought that was pretty cool. Agents and referees try to separate them, but they keep brawling. Nakamura stands tall, and Corbin takes a walk. Uh, the feud will continue at Battleground. I thought that was pretty how's, cool. How's this match doing either guy any favor right now where they're at? Um, like what? None. I don't know. None. No, Nakamura loses. You lose all his unbeaten momentum. Baron Corbin loses. I actually, Baron Corbin can lose as much as he wants because he has the money in the bank. That's the that's way I the see thing, it. though. I hate that they've made us seem like that's that's the formula with the money in the bank. When they always lose, make him fucking win for once. They make do him look something dominant different. so that he's a threat with that thing, and he's not just like, well, I have this as an insurance. No, make people fucking nervous that he has. They it. weren't making Baron Corbin look like a threat. He was losing to Ambrose going into it, so they've never they only really made him look dominant in NXT. Otherwise, he's only ever come off dominant on the main roster, attacking people like a pussy backstage. Yeah, 
Exactly. You know, and he's a big guy. It doesn't make sense. He should. It's that old mentality of give him nothing, kid. You're a monster heel. You know what I mean? Do yeah, it. I agree. But this match, really, this payoff to whatever paper at Battleground, it does nothing for me. This match does nothing for me. I don't think their styles are going to translate well either as a match. Yeah, I am. Um... Maybe I don't. I, don't think, th- I, I don't hope think they so. prove me wrong. I, I don't. I want them to. You know. I do too, but I think that Nakamura, and this is no disrespect towards Baron Corbin, but I think Nakamura is a little out of Baron Corbin's game. Like he's uh, yeah too good for for Corbin. But I mean, AJ Styles is too good for everybody, and he has great matches with everybody. So. You know, it, it, it all depends if Big Match Knack shows up. I thought you were going to say Owens, actually, not Styles. So, um, shocking you didn't say KO on it. Well, you know, sometimes I like to take KO's dick out of my mouth and suck a different dick every once in a while. <laughs> Cause did, well, this is on YouTube. Did you not know that saying if you like someone on YouTube, it's dick sucking? You, you didn't know that? And if you talk shit about someone on YouTube, it's, it's, it's uh, doing it for views? You didn't know that? Did you know if, if you wear anything DC clothing? Okay, funny story. I was I wear DC clothing. Come at me. So I was picking my kids up from school, and these the little comic, kids were like the 11 comic years book old. book or they, the skateboard company? The skateboard company. Okay. I still wear. I'm wearing DC sneakers right now. I still rock that shit. My so I was walking my kids yeah, to school. My shoes are DCs as well. DC makes great shoes. This little 11 year old kid comes up walking past, and he mumbles, he "Goes dick chasers." So I guess it's cool to call people to call dick chasers oh, wearing DCs. So wow, I feel you. really? People. Are a little kid to... buried me. A little wow, kid. I let it happen for wearing DC shoes, dude. And when I was growing up, DC was the fucking king. DC, Osiris, and ES. They were the kings. I can't. I can't let it go. Oh, I, I'm it. shocked. I don't still wear Fila. Oh God, Fila. <laughs> <laughs> I had a big Fila jacket when I was a kid. I was so proud of that Fila jacket. And then Tommy Hilfiger hey, came out, and I wanted a Tommy Hilfiger shirt. But then I—I I even wore Fubu sometimes. Oh fuck, for us by us, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's for all of us. Jesus Christ! Uh, this women's match. The only thing that was really surprising is that Tamina pick up picked up the pinfall. I guess they're trying to reboot her yeah. again. Um, is are they, is this the orange is the new black angle with Tamina with okay. her and Lana like is that where they're going with it? Because <laughs> that's totally what it came off like when they first did it last week. Yeah, I'm uh, gonna have to say. Me. You know what? Of all the matches that I watched this week, this one felt the flattest. Very lackluster. Agreed. Very lackluster. Agreed. And this division. And I posted a tweet and I took some heat for it, but I think I'm right. Going to SmackDown hurt Charlotte big time. Turning her face. This division hurt. can't have Oscar in it any sooner. Oh God, yeah. The women's division in general isn't very good. Like on both shows, it's not very good. Um, it's 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 if, been a bust. Let's say it. Feels, it. Go ahead. They have busted it on both sides. If, I don't mean that sound gross because we're talking about the women, but it's, it's been a bust. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. they squat the Bailey shit. My God, anybody been damaged in the last year more than Bailey? I'd like to see them. Yeah, I, I yeah. I completely agree. Uh, the Bailey, that's probably the biggest tragedy uh, in this division, I think. Uh, then it was organic, and it was, it was at certain times it was magic. The the, the sight of it, the spectacle, yeah. and those NXT takeover how shows, behind and they the just people, how fucked behind, it up. So God, did that. How behind Bailey the people were, how much they genuinely loved her. And the fancy Brits are over there singing along during the yeah. fucking whole Bailey match. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fucking, don't get that much uh, anymore. Um, speaking of tragedies, we go backstage and we have Mike and Maria Kanellis uh, looking for Sami Zayn because she wants an apology. Sami meets with Mike and Maria. Mike and Maria want an apology, but Sami says he has already apologized and feel they should be apologizing to him. He asks if Mike actually wrestles here, and Maria slaps him, and Mike breaks a vase of flowers over his head, which seems a little excessive. Then Maria tells Sami that loves hurt, love hurts. I hate them. I can't stand them. I don't like Maria. I never had. I hate Mike Bennett. He's a dick. I just, I don't like these two. I don't know why they're here. I don't know what they're doing. We already have Mike and Maria Bennett. They're, they're called Miz and Marie's, and they're a fucking thousand times better. Is Maria Kanellis the Joan Cusack of wrestling? Like, she talks with the little squishy face, uh, and you just can't stand her. And Mike into, Bennett. I got an argument with Mike Bennett once. I got, an, I got an argument with Mike Bennett over Twitter once because he said that his wife was one of the greatest minds in wrestling. And I just responded, laugh my ass off, no. And he fucking went off on me. And then his ta- after me and him squashed it, his tag team partner at the time started coming after me. I was like, hey, dude who wasn't here fucking yesterday. 
Like, thanks for your opinion, but this is over. Oh, God, who was that? He looked just like Trent Barretta. Yeah, he was like I, Trent Barretta. I can't remember like, his that, name. If that's what your claim to fame. Yeah. Um, who was that? I can't remember his name because he was irrelevant and I didn't care. They were, the, they were New Japan Tag Team Champions at one point, I think. Yes, they were. They were. I don't remember his name at all, but yeah, like a day after me and Mike had gotten into it, this fucking guy comes and puts in his two cents, and I'm like, this is over. All you need to know about Mike Bennett and Maria Canellis is they were in a Kid Rock video, and they're friends with them. That's all you need to know about what to say about oh, those two. Just one more reason to put them in the fuck-off file. Uh, speak- Big Cass probably likes them, though. Sorry. But speaking of files, we got a fashion se- fashion file segment. Damn, that transition. Yes. Uh, it was cowboy themed this time, the sexy fashion rangers segment. Fandango rides a horse on his stick and they sneak up on Zack Ryder. Breeze fails to lasso Ryder and Mojo arrives. He asks uh, what he walked in on. The fashion police accuse Ryder of attacking Breeze and wrecking their office. Ryder th- then brings up Mojo eliminating him from last week's battle royal. Mojo says they need to get back to work. Ryder says they all needed to get back to reality. And someone stole Fandango's horse. I that think we're good. finally going to disagree on something. Uh oh. Um, when this came on, I just put in my Edge DVD and watched Edge and Christian vignettes from 2000 because yeah. this is just coming off like want to be that. Yeah, it's I, not. It's I, not I, funny I, anymore for me. Oh, I, st- I, I, I can't help it. I love Fandango and I love Tyler Breeze and I like what they're doing and I thought the way that they you know reacted. What I didn't know about Fandango. Did you see that this week? He has all these. His legs are covered in like tats. And yeah, stuff. he's got crazy like, tattoos. Showcase. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Weird. But yeah, uh, I just thought I don't know. For some reason, Fandango riding on that horse just made me laugh. It's so ridiculous. It's so dumb. And I like it. I like that kind of stuff. So I can understand what you're saying. I can understand where you're coming from. Uh, and I actually, to a certain extent, I agree with they are the... I didn't, you know, I never really thought of that. But you're right. They are kind of like a modern Edge and Christian. And I liked Edge and but Christian. But in their defense, though, like it, for, you know, uh, Brizongo's defense, Edge and Christian were giving good talent and good shit to work with. Exactly. I it's Mojo Raleigh, you know. Yeah. Need I say more? And and the man who is hurting the Broski brand, Zack Ryder. Yes. Do you know how do you so know how hard it, do you know how hard I worked to recover the Broski name? You know how hard I did that. I had to work to for that to happen after he ruined it. <laughs> and this led us to our AJ Styles and John Cena versus Rusev and Kevin Owens tag team match. Um, I was kind of good, Matt. I was kind of bored. I, liked I, wasn't, like, I, went, I didn't watch it live, so I went back, and I guess uh, I analyzed it more. I don't know if you watched it live. I wa- Yeah, I watched – Jesus, get, are you ready for this? I watched Raw and SmackDown Live this week. My God. I know. I know. It was shocking. Wow. Well, shout out to you. Yeah, thank uh, you. But, yeah, so. I thought the bad- – it was this paint by numbers match, exactly what you think they would do. They got the spots in. It was okay. I didn't. It's not a great match. It was just. It was fine. It could have been much worse. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not <coughs> saying I didn't like it. Uh, I just, I don't know. For some reason, it, it just didn't click with me. Uh, and it's weird because I love all four dudes in the ring, and I even remember tw- tweeting like, "I don't care who wins," which is my favorite wrestling matches, where I don't care who yeah. wins. I just like to. I don't know. I just thought, <sighs> kind of been there, done that before, seen it. And, I mean, I'm not the hugest, you know, here's two guys who have nothing really to do with each other. Here's two guys who have nothing really to do with each other. Let's fight. You know, tag team I think it's more a case of, I mean, maybe it's like the match itself was okay. But I totally agree. Like, both of the angles the match is based are done. Like, I'm dumb. I don't care about either. So that took a lot away. And I agree. Exactly. Yeah. So that that was my issue. Uh, And that's how SmackDown ended. Uh, Post-match, Cena and Styles show you know, some respect to each other, which was nice to see. And that was SmackDown for the week. So, Travis, yeah, who do you think took it home this week? Who took the best show of the week? Was it Raw or was it SmackDown? It certainly won't uh, be Talking see. Smack. <laughs> I was going to say, followed by Talking Smack. Oh, wait, no. I was going to say, obviously, I would think Raw this week. with Just that Joe segment alone uh, was really good, and I thought it was executed well. Raw didn't set my world on fire this week. Neither show really did, but I... Maybe in ring SmackDown more, but as a whole show, I'd have to go with Raw this week. Team Red representing this week. Yep, I'm gonna have to agree with you. The Kurt Angle, um, the Kurt Angle, um, fuck cliffhanger. God, I couldn't think of the uh, the term. They're gonna say the Kurt Angle fuck fest. <laughs> no, the Kurt Angle cliffhanger uh, really worked for me. 
Really looking forward to Raw. The Samoa Joe, Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns actually delivering a good promo where he's a prick. He sounds like a prick. He's acting like a prick. Uh, I liked it a lot. So just for those two reasons, uh, SmackDown was a fun show to watch. But in terms of getting me psyched and getting me excited for next week's programming, I'm going to give it this week to Raw because they've been le- doing the cliffhanger thing a little bit more recently, and I'm a- that works for me. That's why I like Lost so much back in the day. That's why I love The Walking Dead now. It's because I enjoy the characters, and when it's just like, oh, I- what's happening? <laughs> it's like it's why I used to watch The Walking Dead on Netflix only because I can't handle waiting an entire week for I, i've gotten oh, yeah. over that now you wait to start a season yeah i purposely do that too sometimes now i just can't do it anymore i'm just like oh i want to know what happens i'm just gonna watch it now i can't wait till like two months after it's over for it to get on netflix so i watch it now yeah. but um yeah raw takes it for me this week so we've reached the end of another show travis mr reliable back on the kayfabe today podcast more reliable than my actual co-hosts <laughs> Uh, well, Drew did it I hope, again. This I week. hope your Drew, co-hosts are safe and sound. Yeah, Drew is fine. Uh, I talked to him this week again, actually. And it was funny because Drew's done this for two weeks. What day are you recording this week? I tell him the day, never hear from him again. So I know he's okay in, in brief periods. Unless he's being kidnapped and like he only allows like 10 minutes of Twitter time a day. Um, that hurts no. like you falling asleep, apparently. Oh, God. I fall asleep all the time. Yeah, I'll do your show, Travis. And it's days. hard, guys. Once you hit 30, people don't understand. It's all downhill from there. It's hard. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you understand. So, oh, Travis, more let people know where they can find you because you guys need to check out his content. You can follow me on Twitter real quick, as always, at the Habiki TMD. Yes, follow, you know, check us out on YouTube. Just type in Habiki TMD. The Reset Button Gaming Podcast, myself and Tannen. Slam Pigs podcast, Slam Pigs Union, Smack and Slam Pigs Cruise Control. Yes, we even do a 205 live show. We got you covered. You don't even have to watch it. Just listen to us. There's Hit a girl that on that show. Man. There's a girl on that show. Go listen. Yep, we got boobs. So come on over, check us out. Man, thank you so <laughs> the much. The Hibiki Always. TMD now with boobs. <laughs> now with boobs. Hell yeah. Thank you so much, man, for having me. Always a pleasure to be on your show, man. Thank you for bailing me out again. I appreciate it. Uh, and hey, I just want that robe. I still want that robe. <laughs> Stay tuned next week. Uh, is next week the pay per view? There's a there's an NXT takeover. Is it next week? I God. thought I believe so. I thought it was Brooklyn was the next NXT. Is I'm it? not sure. I don't know. I think Battleground is next week. I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh yes, my I don't. It, I'm thinking during SummerSlam. They give us like two fucking weeks, guys. Give us a break. Yeah, but it, when there is an NXT takeover show, I, I I go over to Travis's channel and we do a post-show review recap offensive time for me to say yep. things on someone else's channel and not risk losing subs. You know, it's a good time. It's a I'm about good to say, time. you get your late night voice, Eric, you get your stew hearts, you get your kicks over on our takeover shows. Always with Brosy Coast and those with me. Always check those out, man. Those are some of my those, most yeah, those are fun, fun things shows. to do. I love doing those because NXT is usually their takeovers are usually really, really good, so we're usually really excited. And there's we're less always shit chipper talking. and dandy yeah. is a velveteen fop going into those. So there you go. So be sure you go check out the uh, the Hibiki TMD over on YouTube, right here on the beautiful platform that you're listening to the Kayfabe Today podcast. I've been putting out quite a few videos. Uh, I got a new tennis in the face video, which if you haven't seen, don't even watch my video. Go buy the game. I want a sequel. It's so much fun. You basically take out cops, clowns, hipsters, scientists, all kinds of enemies. By hitting him in the face with tennis balls. What more do you want? It's great. Got some more videos next week. We're going to have some Walking Dead. I'm debuting a Mass Effect video. That I'm going to start next week. Which I could have done this week. But people wanted more tennis in the face. So I give what the people want. So be sure to check all of that stuff out. Once again, go check out Travis's channel. Follow him on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. At MTL Broski. And for Travis, I'm Eric. And this has been... The Kayfabe Today. Pippity, 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 podcast will never be canceled because I'm the one who does it. And unless my YouTube channel gets terminated, we'll never get talking smacked. Thanks for coming on, buddy. Hey, bro, this podcast was one of the greatest podcasts I've ever heard, bro. Ain't nothing in the streets, it's up to my ankles.